in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed can you lift your hands to heaven and ask the lord for a very definite encounter by his word go ahead and pray by your word an encounter in the name of jesus by your word king of kings lord of lords Faithful and true, Lamb of God, we worship you. You're the King of kings, Lord of lords. Faithful and true, Lamb of God, I worship you. Very simple song. The King of kings. Lord of Lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God, I worship you. One more time. King of kings, Lord of Lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God. Praise the bread of life, Emmanuel, God with us, the one who saves. We praise the cup of life, that glorious spring that washes our sins away father we bless you speak to our hearts oh god in the name of jesus christ blessed be the name of the lord please be seated hallelujah Psalm 102, then we'll read verse 13. Psalms 102 and verse 13. Let me begin by encouraging our hearts that the strength of the believer in this kingdom is the degree and the extent of light that you have. The extent of your spiritual illumination is where your strength is derived from. Hallelujah. When a believer does not have high level spiritual illumination, you will be around spiritual things, but you will never have the power to enjoy the blessings that come. So, um, conferences like this, like I would always observe, is an opportunity for us to be exposed to the light the various dimensions of the light of the kingdom hallelujah when we have high level illumination and we understand the speakings of god then we can connect our faith with understanding then it will produce for us hallelujah praise the name of the lord tonight's teaching will bless you and i pray that your heart be opened in the name of Jesus. Let's read together Psalm 102 and verse 13. Ready? One to read. Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion 
for the time to favor her yea the set time is come let's read the b part together for the time ready one to read for the time to favor her yea the set time hallelujah the bible records that jesus wept two times principally um, as revealed in scripture the first time he wept was in john chapter 11 when he was at the grave of lazarus when he was told that lazarus was gone he cried and oh how he loved him in john 11 35 the bible says jesus wept and then they said oh how that he loved him he wept as an expression of his his love and compassion that he had for lazarus the second time he would weep was in luke chapter 19 luke 19 and we'll begin our reading from verse 42 Luke 19 42 the Bible says that he stood over Jerusalem and he began to weep and he said if thou hast known even in this thy day the things that belong on your peace he says for now they are your eyes let's jump for the sake of time to 44 the Bible says that they will go through all these things these negative things it says because thou knowest not the time of thy visitation hallelujah he wept because many things would pass them by they would become victims of life victims of all kinds of demonic oppressions and he says simply because you did not know the time of your visitation in second first chronicles chapter 12 and verse 32 a popular scripture first chronicles 12 32 it says and of the children of issachar which were men that had understanding of the times this was the advantage they had over their brethren that they could discern times they could discern seasons it says to know what israel ought to do and the heads of them were 200 and all their brethren were at their command may that be your testimony jesus now god designed in fact let's go to genesis genesis chapter one let me show you something uh before i begin to teach genesis chapter one please what we know as the creation story now verse 14 genesis 1 verse 14 the bible says please give us verse 14 and god said let there be light in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs help me for seasons for days and for years so god made light and he used those lights to divide seasons that immediately tells you that our activities on earth is a function of times and seasons please write it down if you must write as far as our work on earth is concerned we subscribe to the law of times and seasons that means that everything you do on earth must be done in time and must be done with respect to time in ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 1 the preacher gave us a greater perspective and he said to everything say everything one more time please to everything there is a season just stop there please look very carefully to everything when the bible says to everything it means there is nothing under the earth that will defy the law of times and seasons to everything there is a season hallelujah and a time for every purpose under the earth let's go to verse 2 now it says a time to be born to be born is not the issue it says a time to be born a time to die a time to plant please look up when a woman gets pregnant and after three months under any kind of condition she feels like 
giving birth do you call that delivery are we together why timing timing the same thing she's afraid of now is the same thing you'll be praying for when she gets to nine months you name them and for one you do not you call that losing a child and for another you congratulate and call it delivery simply because of timing are we together a time to be born then it says a time to die a time to plant a time to pluck up that which is planted verse 3 please a time to kill a time to heal a time to break down and a time to build up let's have one more verse a time to weep and a time to laugh a time to mourn and a time to dance the constant word in all of these verses is time so everything we do under the sun governed by the law of time and seasons that is the first thing i want you to do the second thing i want you to know is that god himself in his dealings with men he respects times and seasons god does not dwell in time god does not need time but when it has to do with his dealings with man he limits his operation to subscribe to times and seasons hallelujah in the greek there are many words that express times and seasons but i want us to discuss two of them we're looking at times and seasons the first is the word chronos c-h-r-o-n-o-s the word chronos chronos means the passage of time the sequential movement of time or the quantitative movement of time that means seconds minutes hours the passage of time is what the bible calls chronos hallelujah and then there is another word called kairos k-a-i-r-o-s they're all greek words that express time kairos kairos means a defining moment it means an opportune time it doesn't just mean a passage of time it means a moment in time where certain things whatever happens within that time will have a prolonged effect on an individual hallelujah so we have chronos the passage of time the quantitative passage of time by the minute by the second by the hour and then we have kairos it talks about moments seasons within time hallelujah are we learning already now please listen there is a dimension of grace that is released in every time and in every season there is a dimension of grace that comes with every time and comes with every season in other words there are supernatural possibilities that if you have the discernment you can experience them simply because you align with certain times there's no time to deal with the story in john chapter 5 john chapter 5 is a classic example the man at gate beautiful remember the story the bible says that man had was there for 38 years and the bible tells us that at a certain time not every time if he just fell in the water at a time that the angel did not come to stay he would just come out wet but not healed the bible says at a certain time an angel would come and steer the water and whoever was discerning to fall first as merciful as god is you would think that when the water was stirred so many people should come and yet that time could only accommodate one discerning person the first person i don't know what was wrong with that man that two years became five became 10 became 15 became 20 became 30 became 35 jesus had to look at that man and the bible says he was there for a long time what was his offense he was near the water are we together he knew what to do but he missed the timing 
thou shall arise and have mercy upon zion for the time to favor her yea the set time is come so there are graces and there are possibilities that are attached to every time in fact in ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 11 the bible says he makes all things beautiful not every time please give it to us ecclesiastes 3 11 3 and 11 he makes all things all things beautiful he had made everything beautiful in his time notice he never said your time he had made everything beautiful in his time that means if you can understand the sequence of god's spiritual timing and the way he walks your life will be an expression of the beauty and the glory of god if you are with me say amen, amen. he makes all things beautiful in his time Time is so important in scripture that in Psalm 90 and verse 12, the psalmist gave us a very strong counsel. It was a prayer. He said in your prayer, ensure that you pray and say, Oh, teach us, so teach us to number our days. Why? That we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. There is a relationship between your walking in wisdom and understanding times and seasons. Teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom paul was mentoring the church in ephesus in ephesians chapter 5 i'm giving you a few scriptures before i begin to teach 5 from verse 15 ephesians 5 and verse 15 he says see then that ye walk circumspectly the word circumspectly means accurately walk accurately not as fools but as wise where is the wisdom there redeeming the time the word redeem means to buy back are we together he's saying redeeming the time because the days are evil verse 17 hopefully we'll get into that one tomorrow he said wherefore be ye not unwise but understanding what the will of the lord is redeeming the time because the days are evil one last scripture john chapter 9 and verse 4 jesus himself was teaching john chapter 9 let's read together these are the words of jesus ready one to read i must walk the works of him that sent me uh-huh while it is day hold on hold on why would jesus sound so limited while it jesus almighty jesus the word of god the incarnate of the father he's saying even for me since i have become a man i have submitted to times and seasons in other words if i waste my time there will be consequences even as far as redemption is concerned i must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day he says the night cometh. he didn't say it may come the night certainly will come and when night comes no man no man provided you are a man you will not be able to walk i must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day he says the night cometh when no man can walk again are we together now most believers do not understand the power of time i have taught and i have read from scripture that the zenith of dominion is dominion over time not over things you can have dominion over things but you are not truly working in dominion until you can have dominion over time the greatest desire of a dying man is not more things the greatest desire of a dying man is not more influence for instance in in, in um, Isaiah chapter 38 the story of Hezekiah Hezekiah pleaded for more time that was his prayer give me time because the moment you have time every other thing can be restored in time are we together you can see that when God wants to show men mercy he restores years more than things I will restore the years not just the things 
you can lose money and get it back you can lose your health and go to the hospital but if you lose time that is the end of it in fact did you know that you call the entire journey from when a man is born to when he dies life time life time for as long as his spirit can coexist with his body if it is two days then his lifetime is two days if it is hundred years his lifetime is hundred years you must understand timing because most believers think all times are convenient for everything at the end of this teaching god will plant in you a sense of urgency there will be a divine sense of urgency in your life and you will know that whatever wastes your time is of the devil because that is the most expensive commodity are we together second to the salvation that you have gotten in christ the gift of time time is an equalizer given to everybody with all the advancement in technology nobody has been able to add more time as an asset we have mastered the way of creating robot artificial intelligence to help accelerate us but god in his wisdom ensured that time remains the equalizer for all men if it is morning in nigeria provided you are in nigeria it will not hurry and become afternoon for you it goes slowly and everybody submits to it 12 o'clock in nigeria is 12 o'clock for everybody six o'clock in nigeria is six o'clock for everybody within that time zone everybody helplessly has to wait for that time are we together so time is a blessing it is an equalizer unfortunately unfortunately when satan comes to a man's life the first thing he does is to study your understanding about time when he finds out that you do not have an appreciation of the blessing and the divine significance of time he will occupy you with activities so that you will think just because you are engaging in several activities it means that you are working with time he says redeem the time because the days are evil praise the name of the lord there are people who have wasted time on mundane things wasted time pursuing things that have no purpose no eternal value are we together and at the end of their lives they would look back in regret and say i wish i had time i wish i had time i wish i had time to do this i wish i had time to do that when god wants to help men he grants them wisdom to understand time now please look up this issue of chronos and kairos let me say a word or two about it in every man's life watch this now chronos which is the passage of time remains with us for as long as we are alive but kairos this opportune time does not come all the time I want you to please listen let me explain how do i okay let me explain chronos and kairos for you please look up imagine with me a student who is in school right um that student is expected to read and prepare because there would be exams all the time is that true but for a student say in secondary school there's something called junior wayek and there's something called the senior wayek now all exams are important but those two exams can define the next seasons of that person is that true now those periods are called kairos moments so every time the student is expected to be serious every time the student is expected to read and give his or her best but when you see students who are preparing say for jam you see the kinds of skills that they employ because they understand that this is a defining moment if i miss this i may have to wait one year again are we together and so you see people waking up in the night are we together you see all kinds of chain readings people begin to deploy all kinds of creativity to make sure they maximize that moment and a wise person will not say you are working too hard because they know that this is a kairos moment 
so even when you see them stretching themselves beyond um the the usual way they would read you only encourage them you don't stop them because you know that if they miss out on that opportunity another example imagine with me a student who is writing his final exam say in law school you see that student has done everything and i mean the student is mandated to read and give the best but for that final exam if it means there are people who fast while they are reading pray while they are reading play worship while they are reading soak their legs in water while they are reading any skill by all means everything that becomes an advantage to maximize that moment because there are there are moments that when you miss that is the end of it are we together so we have the gift and the advantage of chronos the passage of time every day but the bible teaches us that in every man's life there are not many of these seasons but they are there and that they, you have to discern the technology of their arrival you need to learn how this how to know that you are in these seasons because the, for a man sometimes in an entire lifetime you may not have more than six of these seasons and for some of us we've already lost two or three so it will take the grace of god to catch up pay attention please hallelujah that in a man's lifetime you will not have these defining moments come all the time for instance a man who wants to become a professional footballer at age 60 you see his zeal is correct his vision is correct but he missed a kairos moment and that there are no biases to that kairos moment there is no club sites that will take him no matter the skill the system that has been built around that field forbids that he will be part of it professionally at that age are we together is someone learning now that means it is not enough to have vision you must understand the timing component to life i must walk the works of him that sent me hallelujah when the disciples saw jesus they discerned a sense of strange urgency and the disciples wondered why jesus seemed to be up and about i mean you are the king of kings having all power you claim you are the son of god coming from heaven what is the rush about to the extent that you will forget to eat after a crusade you will think he should be resting then you see him with a woman at the well and with the same zeal and passion then he says gentlemen i know you are tired let's go to the other side we'll sleep in the boat while we are going he himself was sleeping meaning he was tired we're not the first to start this busy schedule jesus himself <laughs> you see the scriptural backing for what we do hallelujah and Jesus got to a point where he let them know that he had to do this because there was urgency connected to it. Paul, the apostle, when Paul encountered the Lord Jesus Christ, the level and the extent of urgency that was in Paul, to the extent that if they locked him up in prison, he didn't have time sympathizing with his situation. He said, listen, I don't need your food. Just get me a pen and get me something to be able to write in prison all he was concerned oh this church i've not visited them for three months i'm sure some of these people uh, wolves in sheep clothing will be in this church now let me write something to admonish them if you came to paul in prison to say how are you feeling that was not what he wanted to hear how is this church doing the church in this the church in that and then at the end he said i have fought the good fight i have finished my course not our course hallelujah are we together yes so timing is really really very important very very important when you give birth to a child a young baby it would be unfair and even wicked of you to now begin to flog the child to say i'm talking to you and you're not responding back to me no you need to give that child time after five six years and you find out for instance that the child cannot walk cannot talk 
that now becomes a serious condition a serious condition is that true because you have allowed time there are certain things that should have happened in time already i'm praying for someone in the name of jesus whatever has eaten your years because i will tell you do you know what the locusts and the canker worms eat they don't eat things they eat years there are spirits whose assignment is not your money there are spirits whose assignment is not your influence there are spirits whose assignment is your years i will restore the years that the canker worm the caterpillar let me speak to someone you are here and you say apostle i even gave my life to jesus christ late sincerely i have lived all kinds of things and as it is right now it seems like time is gone thank god you came for this conference i decree and declare may the god who is the lord of time bring restoration to your life hallelujah please sit down when you understand the power of time you will now know why god brought in two spiritual mysteries pastor nat to be able to help men to maximize destiny number one is speed number two is restoration these mysteries directly deal with time when god grants a man speed why do you pray for speed why do you ask for speed hallelujah if i left abuja by road to come here you cannot say i'm stagnated because the car would still be moving but the problem is with respect to the time allotted i may not arrive to meet the activity are we together now so if i can outsource another agency that can help me remember my movement is with respect to time so someone for instance and respectfully so who left in the morning most likely has not arrived by now are we together now and then another person both of us are enjoying movement when you say who are those making progress all of us will stand but who are those who are experiencing speed you see speed is the ability to do much within time i'm saying all of this because when i connect it to our destiny and i connect it to these kairos seasons because i will be showing you prophetically that as individuals as the body of christ as a continent we are in our kairos moment how do you know you are in your kairos moment the answer is in genesis 1 14 he said he made lights to signify time that means there is a revelation there is always a body of spiritual truth that helps you to know what season you are in he made lights and he put those lights to signify seasons you can use light revelation to know what season you have stepped into there are many many people listen when a farmer right now this is november december in nigeria and we call it dry season it would be unwise for a farmer to go to the farm right now is that true and then start farming and not look for an alternative source of water why because you do not have an advantage of rain well maybe in lagos here yeah, i don't know how it works are we together now but generally speaking in nigeria we have what we call the dry and the rainy season a farmer does not need to worry about rain when it's a rainy season he just farms and he allows the advantage that comes with the season are we together now there's what we call irrigation irrigation means you try to simulate rainy season in dry season because you want the crops to grow but that the season does not give you that advantage you have to outsource through technology another route so many people have missed certain seasons i'll give you an instance there are people who god deliberately brought close to others within a particular season and they did not discern why they were there the man will keep asking them can i help you and say no no worry little did they know the man had only two years and he will relocate somewhere and he there were kairos moments maybe god granted you access to someone in government it was by god's god's grace 
and the man was benevolent god gave you unusual access to his ears his heart and his hands but because you could not discern seasons hallelujah yeah. jacob said the lord was in this place but i knew not do you know because jacob did not discern the season in genesis 28 you know his punishment for that 20 years jacob paid the price 20 years two wives and six extra years after 20 years jacob said i need to leave and in chapter 32 when god was coming to him again he said this time around he held him and said i will not let you go i am already this this long behind schedule unless you bless me i will not let you go if my time with you will be this night I will utilize the time and gain back 20 years i'm going to be showing you how to redeem time because there is a technology that has been given to the believers that when we engage it we are able to redeem and cover time hallelujah it is on the strength of these systems of advantage that the bible says for we know that all things all things can work together so don't say i gave my life to christ at 40 i mean the time i'm already halfway gone don't worry there is something you can do with god he designed a system in his economy where your one year can be what your 10 years would have been do you believe this in the name of jesus christ how do you prepare for this defining moments these opportune seasons you prepare for kairos by maximizing chronos that means every day the passage of time is the raw material you use in preparing for these defining moments you do not waste every day and waste every time and expect to just stumble into opportune times let me give you an instance let's assume for instance that a young music minister is trusting god for visibility that god would announce the person it is not the day the opportunity comes that he prepares are we together the opportunity the time he's looking for is kairos but the his performance during the kairos moment will depend on what happens in chronos david prepared for the palace not in the palace david took advantage of his chronos are we together now he learned how to sling he killed the lion he killed the bear it is interesting that nobody was there to record and capture it however the justice system of god preserved that that he was still using his chronos properly one time hmm, i like how god announces men the bible says that the father told him listen go and feed your brothers and he only took food and heard a beast roaring and he said what is the meaning of this they said this man goliath of god six fingers six toes young man go back home immediately he said what shall be done what shall be done to the man who takes this guy down and they said all kinds of things and he said listen i'm able to do this he said, listen don't bring shame on our family we are warriors and he said listen don't disrespect me for wanting to take advantage of my kairos let me defend my preparation i was in the wilderness i was in the wilderness when the lion came when the bear came i tore it and saul looked at him and said no there's something this man this is not he has prepared for the kairos moment and when he stood before goliath goliath said am i a dog israel this is what you are bringing and david said listen you come to me with your spears and with your bows but i come to you in a name i maximize my moments of preparation i will bring you down and use your own sword take off your head and give it to the birds and with one sling that is mastery he didn't he didn't throw the bible does not give us information that he kept doing trial and error he had done that in the wilderness god is speaking to someone already listen waiting for the day god will announce you is the recipe for remaining a mediocre forever you prepare in prayer god has told you he's sending you to the nations 
the secret is not to start looking for opportunities sing my song invite me no that's not how it works where nobody sees you is your greatest stage the real stage is not where people see you is where you are alone and you are praying you are fasting you are preparing that is chronos being maximized are we together according to the law of times and seasons i guarantee you remember the bible says for everything there is a season that means your season is there john remained in the wilderness he was not wasting his time he was eating locusts and wild honey preparing himself finding out the sign to identify jesus the bible says until his season of appearing when that season came with precision when he saw jesus he said behold the lamb i have prepared seeing you i know you are the one there are many of us we do not even know how the doors were to enter look like because we have been wasting the seasons of preparation either in jealousy or competition and all of that rather than preparing for glorious moments isn't it amazing ladies and gentlemen that the captain of our salvation jesus himself he used 30 years to prepare for a ministry of three and a half years if you looked at jesus you would call you would think that jesus had delay in purpose how do you prepare for 30 years what is so special about your assignment 30 years and then after 30 years from age 12 in fact to age 30 theologically speaking there is still a debate as to what jesus was doing because they were the silent days of jesus 18 years we do not hear about jesus again what was he doing where did he go the last thing we know about him is that he was in the temple listening to the doctors and asking intelligent questions at age 30 we see this young man coming to be baptized of john and john saw him and said behold the lamb that takes away the sins of the world he said i'm not even worthy to untie the latchet of your shoe and he said suffer it to be so that scripture will be fulfilled he baptized john and the heavens were open he was full of the spirit and he began his ministry within a short time the bible says his fame spread abroad because the level of power and grace and wisdom when he gathered the people and spoke they said we've not had this not in this fashion who is this man where did he come from they gave him according to the synoptic account of luke in luke chapter 4 they gave him the scroll of Isaiah and he began to read the spirit of the Lord is upon me he hath anointed me he read all of these things they were not impartations he used his chronos for someone already the spirit of God is speaking see if you do not perform well and you abort these defining moments it is because you wasted every day that means every day is counting for that day every day counting towards that day every day man of God your every day the time with God the time with prayer the two two hours the one one hour of worship counting building up for that moment of your season of appearing ask anybody today that God has helped and God has lifted they will tell you they can trace to moments 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 of pain moments of labor without reward are we together now moments they knew for most people listen listen for most people they saw long ago where god was taking them to do you know sincerely some of these days that god has brought us today we saw them long ago but we knew we we're not just going to jump into these days so just wishing and saying i have a dream <clears throat> when you have a dream you wake up and then you begin to walk with the holy spirit line upon line precept upon precept for some of us your service in this house is your maximizing chronos because a day will come god will send you like an arrow to some nation in the world and you may be pioneering a mighty revival but let me tell you if you are a revivalist your first commission will not be revival you already know you are in error when the, your first assignment becomes what you will be doing for the rest of your life that's not how god works with people if you are paul he will start with you in a certain way are we together now that means if you think god has called you to be an apostle and you get up and your very first assignment in life
life is apostolic ministry you are in error that's not how god leaves people god can call you to be a worshiper and your first assignment is to sweep the church how does sweeping the church have to what does it have to do with worship ask Stephen what attending tending to the welfare department had to do with him rising to be a very mighty man god will give you instructions he's using he's preparing you there are some of you because of the nature of the assignment god has given you he will not allow you stay with your parents he will put you with a strict parent somewhere and for 10 years you will not talk. what god how what is all this i have parents this man is too harsh chronos mm -mm. god is preparing you for that time because the kind of burden you will be carrying huh? you are going to be leading a stiff-necked people so it's important for you to be used to pain and controversy to build stamina and stature so god will leave you listen i'm speaking to you prophetically hallelujah Apostle, I know that God is calling me to be a great kingdom financier. Your first assignment will be to empty everything you get for that one year. He said, no, I resist this spirit. God does not. God cannot speak like that. You have already failed the test. Listen, I submit to you. We live in a world where people do not understand the laws of times and seasons. Instead of waiting and wishing for the day, there is already an assurance from scripture that your that day will come wishing for it does not make you step into it it is maximizing your chronos that means preparing for that evangelistic ministry that apostolic ministry that ministry of prophetic psalmistry it does not start with invitations to go from church to church it starts with your relationship for every time you open your bible for every time you pray for every time you come to church and sit quietly and they say listen join a department you are the one who cleans the pulpit while you are cleaning the pulpit there is a record in heaven your chronos is being maximized one day they would look at you and say listen you are part of the welfare um, department okay just lead us in a 10 minutes prayer aha uh -huh. 10 minutes prayer and you say let's all pray let's hold our hands and give jesus praise and that 10 minutes becomes one hour they will start calling you pastor it's just that you're a pastor that can cook you see how you are graduating now 10 minutes prayer one day when they are looking for people to do a little five 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 minutes prayer the spirit of god because he supervises these seasons he will lead somebody to say that gentleman please let him come up and now you have an opportunity and you see when god wants to accelerate your life he will wait until the day your destiny helpers are before you and then that one opportunity hallelujah you must understand those who excel in life are people who they live as if there is an assessment of them every day and it is true there is an assessment every day it's only that your grading will not be that day it will be a cumulative grading so every day you find someone who is doing well already praying and fasting and you are wondering what are you praying for again what are you studying for again has god not lifted you it is the preparation every day maximizing chronos that gives you an opportunity jesus did not die every day listen carefully but he prepared for his death from the time he was born it took him one day to die but it took him a long time to prepare for that one day he kept saying it destroyed this temple and i will build it he would be alone and he would go to pray what was he praying for then he went to get Simon. licked listen with all the preparation of jesus he almost aborted redemption father if it's possible take this cup off me your jesus the bible says if you turn aside in the day of battle please listen it said your strength is small god is speaking to me to encourage someone right now your appetite for visibility is what may destroy the seasons coming you need to reduce this 
this insistence to be known and prepare you announce yourself by being faithful in your everyday your faithfulness during your chrono seasons is what prepares you for that kairos moment you don't have to pray for it to come it's been programmed thou shall arise and have mercy upon zion for the time to favor her yea the kairos moment has come hallelujah you prepare in prayer you prepare in fasting you prepare by rising to a level of value and capacity that the moment your season comes is with gallancy and honor that you step into that season never to come out in shame again but for many people you see they think every day is kairos and so they can choose to waste every day not knowing that when these seasons go it takes a long time a long time anybody who did not farm this year is almost over in fact it's over you have to be patient for a few months while you are doing that you go and get your seeds you get your fertilizer you get everything preparing for that moment because for sure as far as the, there is day and night rainy season will come again is that true your pastor he shared his story many times when he was with pastor esco and all the the, the events that happened preparing for those moments you see there is nobody who comes out of nowhere let me tell you the truth all that talk is nonsense there is nobody just because you were not in the wilderness does not mean the person was not there while you are killing the lion and the bear nobody sees you there's no audience to clap for you but the all-seeing eye of god who controls times you've got times and seasons in your hands You call for light out of darkness. You don't need a man to be the God you are. Listen, very powerful song. So he controls times and seasons. Who told you that you must arrange your manifestation? Who told you you must arrange the seasons for your announcement? It is an unnecessary burden. In the economy of God, there is already room for your announcement. If you utilize that opportunity, respectfully speaking, let me tell you, and I say this with every sense of humility, I have seen pastors and I have seen leaders desiring to rise, desiring to find, especially in our day you know some of this celebrity thing everybody wants to be known and, and to be honest you know it, it's in men people want to maximize their destinies but i see how people ignore their every day and keep anticipating for that one day and then the one day comes and they are not even aware that it is the one day because you were so busy um so busy getting you were distracted and did not prepare there are other people who will prepare as if one day will not come one day will come and meet them while preparing joseph listen carefully joseph never knew that by the next day he would be prime minister every opportunity he had to be a blessing with his gift he did because you give a portion to seven and to eight you do not know you do not know which of them you are waiting until the day a rich man meets you then you are kind to him you will be surprised that the person who will announce you to the rich man is the poorest person around you and because you refuse to show compassion you recycle seasons again there are many people who do not show honor to all men they want only specific people and they believe that when you, you meet somebody who has means it will fast track and accelerate your rising there are people who will never get serious with god until the day you give them a sermon you say you are preaching on wednesday and all of a sudden there's concordance there's greek and hebrew lexicon are we together there's all kinds of this they they recharge their phone data for three days that is only a preparation to maintain your reputation not to bless because the day the opportunity will come unfortunately it may come inside a plane not on the pulpit the person who will announce you can be in a plane and god gives you an opportunity 50 minutes you are with that person and god says now is your moment 
the thing about kairos moments is that kairos moments are not necessarily location dependent you need to be prepared in season and out of season it can happen anywhere if they if you had asked um if you had asked david to suggest where god will announce him he would not say it was on the battleground he would probably choose somewhere else but simply faithfulness in carrying food was what announced the warrior they did not say that here is a competition if you can kill come and stand hallelujah i made up my mind that every opportunity god gives me listen ladies and gentlemen i do not i do not there is no such thing in my world as superior preparation and inferior preparation i take everything with destiny seriousness if you tell me i'm going to talk to two people you will see me preparing as if i'm going for a crusade why number one because i love jesus number two because i love the people but number three i understand that chronos is the unit of kairos every moment as i prepare i'm moving closer to that kairos moment hallelujah yes sir. thou shall arise and have mercy upon zion for the time i have discerned that there are opportune times the time to favor her yea the set time has come now write a few things so we'll find somewhere to pray there are three things that you do to maximize time three things and then we'll connect it with the theme for tonight three things number one the first assignment you have as far as times and seasons are concerned is to master the art of discerning seasons you need discernment the bible says and of the sons of issachar men who had an understanding of the times discern seasons you must know how to discern time how do you discern time the word of god is the instrument of discernment the word of god primarily is the instrument of discernment the word of god is the primary instrument for discernment number two study the nature of the dealings of the spirit with you and it can help you to point seasons you can there is a way god begins to deal with you suddenly god gives you an instruction you are going on 30 days prayer and fasting and tells you you are going to wake up every night even before pastor Nath does his hallelujah challenge god tells you you will start your own one week before him there are events around your life that already become pointers if you can discern the bible says when jesus was born there was a star and those who were wise men the magi they could read the star and they came with precision they were not born again they were not led of the spirit they used secular wisdom using light they came right where jesus was hallelujah you can discern seasons what is happening in my life i noticed in the last one week everybody is giving me money everybody is, is telling me listen come and do this someone wanted to preach and he said i'm busy can you stand in for me god what are you saying what are you saying most believers do not have not trained their faculty of discernment so we do not know when we step into very defining moments there are people you know that ordinarily you should not meet lord why did you give me access to be among these great people what should i do now and we waste it we laugh around we eat and we leave only to find out that that door will not be open like that again if joseph came before pharaoh and said pharaoh i'm not here to interpret your dreams number one go and catch potiphar's wife you don't know what has happened to me let me tell you i'm here to defend myself you know what would have happened to him if he did not drop his offense and childishness and focus on the seasons he, he would have said now that i'm with you pharaoh even if i die let me die you know how people behave an innocent man has been imprisoning 
x number of years plus the two years that were added as a result of the wickedness of the wine presser he refused to remember me and pharaoh said, okay i've had you we are really sorry about everything go back to the prison or go back to your father's house either ways he would not have succeeded but when he got there the ability to have prepared and once he got there pharaoh said this is my dream and he laughed he said pharaoh it's not about cows it's not about plants you have seen a mystery that connects you to the laws of seasons that there will always be seasons of plenty and of luck now let me recommend save 20 percent of this and that and pharaoh said now you are talking within that moment joseph rose and became prime minister no election no voting you would see joseph and say where did you come from let me tell you where he came from from the dreamer to the pit to his faithfulness in the house of potiphar to his getting to the prison even though he was innocent all of them were counting for that day every time you see a day of favor a day of favor is equal to many days of preparation a day of manifestation that was well utilized is a cumulative of many 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 great days i will never waste seasons in my life because in my mind every day counts every day counts i won't pray i won't say i'm too tired to pray today after all there is tomorrow remember the power of the day after tomorrow comes from the prayer of yesterday and today it's a cumulative we continue to abort seasons because we waste our every day you get up in the morning you sleep you know anytime you are not serious you are not at anything no project there is nothing that is running and driving your life the bible says to learn from jesus when jesus showed up there was nothing enough to distract him he had set his face like a flint about my father's business at age 12 even his parents came to look for him say why are you looking for me don't you go to the temple don't they read the scriptures did you not hear that i should be about my father's business that sense of urgency now is the acceptable time and that is true but you see your now is a cumulative of everything you have done with your chronos when God announces you it is because he has given you an opportunity to prepare and if that season comes ladies and gentlemen and you are not prepared you know what happens seasons will recycle again truly you will find out that a realm you should have entered a door that should have opened for you there are people who sit down and keep regretting and shouting and saying, listen, I've not been promoted. I've not been lifted. This is unfair. In this church, by now, by my status, I should be a pastor. By now, I should be an apostle. By now, I should be a prophet. In fact, it's just because of condition. I should be rich by now. All those explanations do not count. Every day, you do this to the list of the brethren. You come to church, you are sweeping. It's counting. Are we together? Yeah. How you use your time. For Ruth to be the wife of Boaz, she didn't just appear one day and say, listen, are you going to marry me or not? Or you are going to waste prophecy? I'm going to be a grandmother of Jesus. No. <laughs> Naomi advised her and said, everything you do in that field, we're coming there tomorrow because we're going to be talking about the global harvest. Hallelujah. Yes. It is a kairos moment among the many things the greatest time in human history right now for the global harvest but you need to draw a lesson from the life of ruth because naomi told her he said when you get to the field don't be distracted there is something within the field that is for you when you go there be cautious everything you do will count and when she went there she gleaned with honor and respect and the elders and the people there was boaz there and he saw her he said who is this that is diligent and faithful he said do not hurt her allow her to take as much and she went back to ruth she maximized every day until she stepped into the lineage of jesus 
John utilized every day until he got to a point where he started wasting his chronos through offense through bitterness and one time he said go and tell jesus are you the messiah or should we expect another jesus said something has happened to you offense has come into you and he died as a birthday gift a prophet who prophesied the bible says of all the prophets isaiah jeremiah mighty men none was like john and look how his life ended the birthday gift for a girl dancing before the king they went to remove his head when i learned this principle believe me you go you go to my room now you put on my laptop you will see there is a message and there is a study there are no lazy moments in my life if i wake up this is the day the lord has made we are ready to walk i must walk the works of him that sent me it has nothing to do with invitation it has nothing to do with ministrations i can tell you with all due respect and humility that i have stepped into seasons in my life and even in ministry they didn't seem to carry a semblance of those honor it's just that thank god i was prepared there have been times i found myself in the midst of people and they say apostle we're going to give you this time you're going to talk this is what you will talk about there was no bible there there was no nothing there was no not it was from the residue of that preparation he told elijah eat eat now you will not have that opportunity eat now he ate and he went back to sleep the angel tapped him and said don't you understand times and seasons eat now and the bible says he went 40 days on the strength of what he has eaten for someone let me tell you the assignment that god is giving you right now you will not have the opportunity now that you do not yet have children god is saying fast and pray because your first set it will be a set of twins while you are saying amen let me tell you the other side of that story are we together you will be surprised that the five six seven eight hours there are many people today who by reason of biological timing don't have the strength again to be able to pray and fast and do certain things while there were people who were taking care of your needs god said keep investing in your spiritual life but you refuse now respectfully speaking maybe your dad has gone to be with the lord your mom has gone to be with the lord the family responsibility is now on you the time you should use to pray and fast you have to use it to look for money if you understand this law of time and seasons you it will change your life in a way that you cannot imagine that every day counts every day counts every day counts every moment counts for someone god can tell you okay while you are trusting god for a husband or a wife quickly do the masters now quickly do the phd now because the level of commitment that it would demand of you it can cost your home utilize the time mm -mm. i have all the time is my life the foolishness of a generation that has dropped has torn people down there are others god will say i'm going to give you a great ministry but come to oasis and sit down and look for something to do and serve and you find out that god keeps sending you to places that are uncomfortable is because god wants you to taste of everything you will be a leader and you will be an overseer of a ministry how do you lead when you do not know the dynamics of leadership while the message is going on god will say okay they should allocate him to stand outside at the road and that person is going to be a mighty apostle and while you are standing someone sees you and says, i used to know you on campus is this how you have lost your fire you are standing as a protocol on the road and you will feel stupid uh-huh that's how great men abort greater destinies you stand there and god says you'll be patient and when god is done with you someday when you become a great leader someone will say listen i will be your biggest partner 20 years ago i came for oasis conference were you not the one who was standing at the door god told me 20 years later you will be a man of god i should sponsor it listen how do i express this thing now most people have aborted times have aborted great destinies 
imagine if jesus kept saying i will die simple it's okay i'm going to die that's the most important thing judas will betray me i don't know when i just know that i'm going to die and then i will purchase salvation let's eat and drink ladies and gentlemen um i am the savior of the world don't forget i am the logos of god i am not a false prophet jesus would have been surprised it was the prayer bank the fasting bank the commitment you see that all the women who later helped him when he died is because he helped them when he was alive if he didn't help them when he was alive his body would be there with nobody to come and clean him hallelujah so number one you must discern seasons let me hurry up number two you must know what steps to take when you come into seasons not every step is important when you get into certain defining seasons please listen to me you must know what steps to take the bible says and of the sons of issachar men who had an understanding of the time and to know what israel ought to do there is what you need to do when you come into certain seasons for some of you when you come into certain seasons it's a call for greater levels of consecration god will make certain demands on you unusual demands some of you are even in that season right now you need to know what to do by the spirit lord what do i need to do with this season and god says from now till january from 12 to 3 let that be your prayer time that is my time meeting with you it is not a general instruction for everybody it is just from now till january if you miss because that opportunity is where it is within that encounter that the real mantle for your ministry will rest on you and if you do not know how to utilize that time many years ago i, I used to go to our boys quarters and carry a stick stick and stand there and preach i would be shouting and preaching alone i didn't know my mother was hiding somewhere looking at me it was later in the future she told me one day because she had been praying my grandfather was uh, you know the first trustee a pioneer of a denomination so i come from a lineage of of uh, missionaries and, and and pastors she had been praying that either her younger brother or her son let god use at least one person and I was there, I would hold the sticks and I'd be preaching, preaching. And when it's time, I'll be laying hands on blocks. I mean it, I'm not, I'm not joking. And I would sense the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Literally. If I laid hands on blocks, how stubborn is the head that I would lay hands on that it will not go? preparation for some of you god has given you a mandate that you are going to serve the purposes of god with kings and as it is right now god cannot announce you because announcing you will be a tragedy to your own life so god will withhold your rising not every closed door is demonic there are closed doors that are a sign of god's mercy because you are in your kairos moment but you have wasted your chronos so god will give you a chance to start afresh again let's wrap up second corinthians 6 and verse 2 from where you got the theme second corinthians 6 and verse 2 it says for i have heard of thee in the time accepted and in the day of salvation i have succored thee it says behold now so they say now prophesy to yourself say now. now now is the accepted time behold now is the day of salvation now when he was speaking about this he was speaking with respect to salvation the new birth encounter we're coming there tomorrow are we together but for now salvation is the word soteria the greek word is all encompassing healing lifting breakthrough the fullness of the life and the power of God manifest. He says, now is the acceptable time. The acceptable time for the believer started from the time Jesus resurrected. 
are we together now because you will see in other versions the acceptable time is the time of his grace that now the the wall has been torn the veil has been torn and now we have access in christ we can have access to our now the acceptable time regardless what happened before that in christ today can be your day of salvation he says they heard the word just like we we, uh, we they heard the word just like um we did but the word did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it he said today if you hear his word harden not your heart like they did in the wilderness so for someone god is speaking to you that this is your today today does not mean 24 just means your season your season of lifting your season of shining your season of being announced are we together now and because you know that it is your day your prayer now will be lord arise and have mercy upon me for the time to favor me for the time to lift me for the time to open up doors for me even the set time when you know your set time you maximize it by crying for mercy he says call on to me and i will answer you see mercy is not for sinners it is of the lord's mercy that we are not consumed are we together now don't make a mistake of thinking the prayer of mercy is for sinners it is by the mercy of god listen he says i will have mercy upon whom i will have mercy i will have compassion upon whom i'll have compassion the moment you discern your season you know that this is a defining moment for me you begin to pray god show me mercy grant me access by your spirit to maximize this season oh blessed is the man who becomes a beneficiary of god's mercy i wish i had the time to open you up to the dimensions of god's mercy the mercy of god does not just mean pardoning for an offender no the mercy of god means to show pity to give you a leverage From the rising of the sun to the setting of the set, your name is to be hallowed. A few weeks ago, I just sensed very strongly in my heart that God will have me spend some extended time praying in the night nights are usually my time of prayer but i began to sense i'm wrapping up now i began to sense very strongly that a new season was going to open up for me and in one of the nights i was praying and just worshiping and i had a vision and every time i see god lifting me or going to another dimension i usually will see a military man and then you know how they dress military people that's what i saw and while I was praying, I just sensed a very strong anointing of the Holy Spirit. And the Lord took me to Jeremiah 1 from verse 9. He says, authority over nations. Authority over nations to pull down, to uproot. There is a mantle and a grace for that. See, having power over cities having power remember in matthew 25 the parable of the five talent the reward that was given to them there are three levels of authority that a man can command on earth number one and is the least level is authority over things where god gives you access to money and not all of that the second level of authority you can command in the spirit is authority over nations and territories the highest level of authority a man can command is authority over God's program. God literally makes you a steward, not of nations, of his program. That means God will say for the next 10 years, there is a harvest of 100 million souls. You are the one I'm putting in charge of that program. Hallelujah. When I began to have that vision, I started praying. I said, Lord, whatever it would take, by your mercy and by your grace, you are granting us access and authority over systems, over nations. Let it be for your glory. Are we together now? 
I'm saying this because for I believe that for God to have put this thing now is the acceptable time for some of us when you go back home hallelujah challenge should not just end because it ended you should do your own and pray and 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 pray and worship and say Lord the demands of this new season now is the acceptable time heaven has already signified through this word that it is time for you to carry greater anointings it is time for you to step into mantles it is time for certain doors to be open i pray for you that you will not make the mistake of jacob jacob said the lord was in this place and i knew not man of god hear me you may need to subject yourself right now taking advantage of this time businessman for some of you you will need to settle down and pray we're going to pray for just one minute you don't even have to stand whether you are seated or standing you are going to cry unto god and say father i have i have for some of you you have you have mismanaged your chronos and right now that the kairos moment has come or is coming the truth is there is no spiritual redness i like you to cry for mercy from heaven 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 cry to the holder of times and seasons show mercy oh god cry for mercy oh god Someone is crying. Show me mercy to maximize every day. To maximize every day as I prepare for that defining moment. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. My Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. I thank you for lifting. My Hallelujah. You know, sometimes these things scatter my head. You know how someone takes all of you who were in the world, who God delivered you and ransomed you from all kinds of nonsense. You know, praise the Lord. You see a madman on the road alone and he's just singing and bouncing even if he's inside a gutter he's just singing and in his mind he's in a world all by himself that's what the word of god does he said i found your word and i did eat them and it was a joy and a rejoicing to my soul hmm. he said my son eat thou honey for it is good for you eat thou honey There is what you can know. You don't need anything to happen physically. Are you getting my point? It's like a farmer who plants, pastor. You don't plant a tree and then you come and you are wondering. You are so anxious. People look at you and you say, ah, will this thing grow? No. The man just goes to start buying bags in preparation because he knows that the ground was commanded to produce. Are you getting my point? so there are things that when you know you start rejoicing and dancing because for for it not to manifest is like saying jesus didn't die on the cross is that guaranteed hallelujah let's get to the word of god thank you jesus christ what is the secret of greatness what does it even mean to be great really what does it mean to be great you know we talk about greatness what does it mean to be great because we have to understand in the kingdom what does it mean to be great hallelujah to be great means to have an enlarged sphere of influence to have an enlarged sphere of influence he said thou shall increase my greatness an enlarged sphere of influence to be great means to have increased access to be great means to have increased 
access access to anything resources people please make sure you write to be great means to have what increased sphere of influence and it also means to have increased access access to whatever resources people opportunities hallelujah and why is greatness important in the kingdom we must get this you know everything we discuss we discuss with respect to the kingdom why is it necessary listen do not let anybody preach you out of the sincere desire to be great because sometimes in a bit to show that we are christians we say lord please don't make me great let me not fall into sin let me not do this kingdom advancement is highly dependent on kingdom influence it takes greatness and influence to enforce the kingdom you must understand this no one will truly be able to influence this system and bring in the value system of the kingdom without increase without influence and greatness the bible says and the boy jesus for him to be able to carry out his assignment he had to grow in wisdom he had to grow in what stature not just the word stature there does not mean um physical growth no the word stature there means influence a time came in the life of jesus they said all men seek for thee he was on the mountain and five thousand men aside women and children came everybody say influence it is very important to understand the components that the prophetic agenda of God is dependent upon. So that we will not just be religious. Now, there are people who want to be great just because they have suffered too much. While that is not a wrong reason, it's not, it's not, it does not qualify to be an ultimate motivation when you come into the kingdom. To say, I've suffered too much. I must be great in life. That's ambitious. It's wonderful except for the fact that when you come into the kingdom you must edit your motive to suit the desire of the king hallelujah so god wants us to be great without greatness listen without greatness he told abraham he said i will make your name i will give you an identity of greatness and that greatness will call the attention of the kings and the people around and they will come to see what your god is doing he said it shall come to pass in that day that the mountain of the lord's house have you read that scripture the mountain of the lord's house shall do what be exalted above all other mountains and as a result men will flow to it until the mountain is exalted men cannot flow to it are you getting what i'm saying now it is easy to listen to a great man than to listen to a man who is struggling with greatness. Is that true? Mm. So the Lord wants to increase our greatness. Our greatness in every ramification. Financially, spiritually, and otherwise. Oh, I receive what he wants to give. I receive it. No religion will preach me out of this. No piety no sense of false holiness will push me out of the revelation it is as a result of the my love for the king that i need to gain an influence across the mountains that he has given me the authority to legislate so that they will hear the word of the lord distant shores and the islands will see your life don't know and got it precisely that's what will happen to you distant shores and the islands will see your life as it rises on us. thank you jesus christ so what is the secret of greatness how i know that we keep you know the the issue the issue i have with the body of christ is that we do a lot of preaching but we do very little of teaching you know what it means to preach to preach means to declare it means to proclaim 
it means to bring you into an awareness of a reality that's what it means to preach but to teach means to give you understanding of the operation of that thing hallelujah that's the challenge with the body of christ we do a lot of preaching god wants to make you great how many of you believe you are going to be great say me say now lift up your hands be great and the person says amen that's preaching wonderful preaching except for the fact that it does not work like that in the kingdom that's not how your lecturer taught you he didn't come to the class and say how many of you are interested in having a degree he says me or oh, me I've, I've been writing jam and he said are you serious say all right this course is yours no you don't you don't behave like that hallelujah you sit down through seasons of dealings that will prune you you will cry through the rain but you will remain there for the excellency of something that is greater than your pain hallelujah how come life teaches us an obvious way to be great but when it comes to the kingdom we don't pay attention to the teaching of the word carry a weak hundred level student pastor as weak as whatever sit that student down for six years under a medical curriculum and you produce a doctor bold enough to confront sicknesses and diseases the same person who will see someone six years ago convulse and be confused and not know what to do six years later he sees someone convulsing and while everybody is moving he says no, no i know what to do everybody say knowledge knowledge keeps you in charge so what other people are running away from you stand you say uh -uh, i'm not ignorant i know exactly what to do the bible says jesus himself knew what to do may you know what to do in this life it's dangerous not to know what to do when the devil throws sickness may you know what to do when poverty attempts to come may you know what to do when death and all these things that kill men if you don't know what to do it will kill you don't let anybody preach you out of this truth it's on the strength of what you know that you reign in this life he said rule thou in the midst of your enemies and he made two great lights one to rule in the day and the other to rule in the night when you have that light you will rule both in the day and the night thank you jesus christ say after me god wants me to be great for the sake of his kingdom say it again god wants me to be great for the sake of the kingdom and i choose to cooperate with him I made some very interesting discoveries one of my goals in life is not to waste my time on earth one of my very personal goals in life is that i'm not going to join the crowd of people wasting their time on this is how they do it this is how they do it uh -uh. i choose to be like the bereans the bible says they sat down to find out how is this thing done so you don't waste 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 years of your life then you find out that you've been making a mistake for 60 years and you have to go back and begin to undo your life hallelujah there are people who have time but they do not have the knowledge and the information to make them great by the time they spend all the time in their dying days they get the knowledge but there is no time to put it to work you have time and God is granting you knowledge. Take advantage of it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The secret to greatness in the kingdom is encapsulated in one word. And I know you've heard that word, but tonight, just keep away what you've heard and listen and let's explore the word. The secret of greatness in the kingdom is hidden in one word. And that word is called favor. Write it down. We're going to be exploring something tonight. The secret of greatness in the kingdom is shrouded in one word. Favor. Ah, open our eyes tonight in the name of Jesus. Bring the days of struggling to an end. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The secret to greatness in the kingdom 
is favor. Hmm. What is favor? Favor means access beyond your efforts. When you gain access beyond your efforts. Many of us have had a lot of messages about favor. But many of them have not been balanced. And so we know so much about favor. But we see very little or none of it in our lives. Hallelujah. The first thing I want you to know about favor. Is that favor is not a mystery. This is one of the things we have been taught by well-meaning people that favor in the kingdom. The fact that it is undeserved does not mean it cannot be activated. Thank you, Jesus. Favor means access beyond your efforts. It means divine approval. Unmerited access. Favor is unmerited, but it must be activated to walk in your life. So many of us have been taught that somehow in the journey of your life, favor just finds its way to your life. You may wait forever and never see that favor. Although it is unmerited, there are laws that activate its coming. It is the operation, the, the dispensing of favor that you cannot explain and i will tell you why but the initiation and the maintenance of that realm of favor is absolutely predictable absolutely thank you jesus christ is someone getting blessed already the bible teaches us that there are two levels of favor luke chapter 2 verse 52 please let's have it if you can have it in amplified if there's no amplified no problem I want to hurry up because I want to dwell on certain things. This is just an introduction. There are two levels of favor or two dimensions to favor as, as revealed in the word of God. Okay, let's, let's just open up so we can hurry up. I don't want us to wait here too long tonight. Okay, please just look up so we'll hurry up. Everyone, let's read. One, two, read. And Jesus increased in wisdom, in broad and full understanding, and in stature and years and in with and favor with who and so the bible shows us that there are two levels of favor please get this there is favor with god everybody right and there is favor with men and these two levels operate on different sets of laws it is absolutely possible to have favor with God and not have favor with men and it is absolutely possible to have favor with men and not have favor with God someone getting blessed tonight blessed be the name of the Lord favor with God and favor with men since we have established that the key, the secret to greatness in the kingdom is favor. Everybody say the secret to my greatness is favor. Say it convincingly. The secret to my greatness is favor. Hallelujah. Oh, how true. How true. You neglect this truth to your own detriment. Let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. Hope is rising for someone tonight. So let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. How do you secure favor with God? This is the first part. Let's discuss it very quickly. How do you secure favor with God? We have been very mathematical in our approach this night. So the secret to greatness is favor. 
we are examining that subject since that is the key that holds our greatness in the kingdom and we have seen that according to Luke 252 there is favor with God and favor with men so how do we secure favor with God number one you want favor with God you need three keys the first key is that you must have the fear of the Lord please don't make a mistake about this you want favor with God the first requirement are you seeing now that favor with God is not free huh I get very very disturbed at the gospel that makes believers irresponsible just makes them believe that everything can just happen like that no sir if everything just happens like that God has to apologize to the little children and the countries that die is that true if it was entirely God that controls the distribution of wealth then God would have to apologize as to why a terrorist group would be so rich and a ministry would be so broke are you getting my point now the heaven of heavens is the Lord but the Bible says the earth has he given to the sons of men. The fear of the Lord. Proverbs chapter 9 verse 10. Media you help us please. We need a lot of speed here. Proverbs chapter 9 verse 10. You must possess the fear of the Lord. You want to secure favor with God. Proverbs 9 verse 10. The reverent and worshipful fear of the Lord. Let's just use um, King James, except where we went from before, so that we rush. The fear of the Lord is what? The beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy is understanding. You want to be wise? You want to walk in wisdom? The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning. It takes wisdom for you to even explore the mysteries of the kingdom. And the Bible says the fear of the Lord is what gives you that access. That's where your journey begins. Everybody say the fear of the Lord. What does it mean to fear God? It doesn't mean to run away from God. To fear God means to have respect. You can replace that word fear with the word reverence and loyalty. It doesn't mean to run away from Him. No. The fear of the Lord means to have respect. Hallelujah. I will reverence you, Lord. I will reverence you, Lord. I will reverence you, Lord. For him. Your presence, there is life everlasting. I will reverence you. Listen, can I tell you something? In the body of Christ, many people believe in Jesus, but very few people have respect for him. It's possible to believe a man and not respect that man. Is that true? You can believe in your boss. There's nothing you can do. Open the door of your office. Is the one sitting there. So you believe he's your boss. But there is this reverence, honor, respect. Let's look at something. The Bible says in Psalm 25, Psalm 25 verse 14. He said the secret things of the Lord are not with them that pray in tongues. Not with Christians. Not with those who fall under the anointing. Not with prophets, not with apostles. The secret things of the Lord are not even with them who have faith. The secret things of the Lord. The things of the Lord are with many people, but the secret things, the hallowed bread of the Spirit, they are with them that fear Him. He said, as, an, as a result, He will show them. He never said the things of the Lord 
There are, there are many things, but the secret. Every great man has secret. It takes only a fool to share everything to everybody. You don't do that. You don't have visitors come into your house. And your mother says, come, let me even show you. We bought a new mattress. Come inside our bedroom. No. Hallelujah. But there are certain people because of the depth of reverence. Maybe a worker in the house who respects that man. You, the person can even have sons that are irresponsible. But he will call a house help into his bedroom. And say, let me show you something. The secret things. There are chambers in the spirit, my brother. And everywhere is not accessible to everyone. Although we are in the kingdom. The secrets of the Lord. He said, I wept for no man was worthy to open the book. The book is there, but it, it's not everybody who opens it. Hallelujah. The clearest proof of your reverence for God is to keep his commands. I want to give you a spiritual litmus test. And let's look at that very quickly in John 14 verse 21 John 14 21 the clearest proof don't just say I fear God no there are exact parameters to measure I love the kingdom it doesn't leave you to confusion you can know here and now right now I don't care whether you've been a preacher for 20 years I don't care whether you cry if any song is being raised the Bible says he that hath my words so it's one thing to have it. Is that true? And does what? And keepeth them. He it is that loves me. That has respect and reverence for me. And as a result, he that loveth me shall be loved of my father and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Is that in your scripture? That means God is saying, I will come. I will reveal dimensions to him. He that obeys me is he that loves me. It's not enough to just say, I love you. I fear you. I there are so many believers. Talk is cheap. First John 5 verse 3. The Bible gives us another very clear test. First John 5 verse 3. Oh, Shibakatalabako Rasida Baladabai somebody is changing in the name of jesus first john 5 verse 3 can we read together one to read for this is the word love of god that we keep his commandments and the bible says his commandments are not burdensome the word grievous there's the word burdensome hallelujah he said my yoke is easy and my burden is light his commands are not burdensome Please don't let anybody fool you. There are laws in the kingdom. I've said it. These things are, it's not the law of Old Testament. It, they are the laws that give structure to the kingdom. The laws of the kingdom are like the skeleton in a man's body. That's what gives form and structure in the kingdom. Hallelujah. You must have the fear of the Lord. You must have the spirit of reverence. So I can look at your life and know whether you fear God or not. Hallelujah. Don't say, ah, I, I fear God by faith. Even him, he knows. Uh-uh. There are exact parameters. You're not walking in his ways. You're not living by his principles and his value system. Don't tell me you fear God. When you can you don't know the difference between church and a disco hall. Between well, believers don't in this side of God's kingdom are not so involved in all those things again. But there are all kinds of things we do. And we believe. Listen, please and please, and I, I don't I don't mean this, I don't mean this to um to discredit ministers and ministries in the body of Christ, but I've said it again and again that the message of grace is only an accurate message if it is accepted as part of the full gospel are you getting my point the whole gospel must be preached there is a level to which the grace message is taught 
and just tells you oh don't concentrate on your love for god concentrate on his love for you and concentrate on all of that and you know anything will happen everything has been done wonderful what then is the reward of obedience why then is there hellfire if everything is like that god must apologize to ananias and Sapphira. don't you think so was it not in the new testament they fell down and they died why couldn't he have at least given them a chance maybe they will repent later on how could a loving god make the lake of fire hallelujah seven churches in, in the book of revelation when god began to talk to them he was focused on their works i know your works i know your works is, is that in your bible brothers and sisters be careful hallelujah honor the body of christ but you must realize that if the gospel is not taught holistically it can lead people into error there are a lot of people missing it and dancing around in ignorance believing are you getting my point let me share with you something that will surprise you dl moody many of you have read about him right dl moody was a mighty evangelist of god and he came and preached for decades when dl moody died sir after 10 years they decided to do a like a little census to follow up the converts of dl moody please listen this is this is not an exaggerated statement hallelujah and they found out that only one out of 10 converts of dl moody were still standing in the faith are you getting what i'm saying i respect him i honor him hallelujah it was look at such a great man after laboring they found out that most of the people who were coming out in his meetings only one out of ten remained safe and were still in the faith we are not talking of people who built ministries those who were still eligible to make heaven according to the, the standards of the word of god what happened to all the emotionalism that happened in those meetings and then they took the same census for a man called Charles G. Finney. Hallelujah. And they found out most of the great men you see, most of the great men, they were products of that man's revival. When you got born again in his meeting, you hear everything that keeps you in the faith for life. Something is wrong with our gospel. It's not incorrect, but it's not complete either. There are missing sides that we must couple together. Brothers and sisters, listen to me. God is a loving God, but God is also a just God. Hallelujah. What I've just told you now is called the gospel of the kingdom. It switches dimension and lets you know that Jesus is not only a savior, but he's a king. hallelujah blessed be the name of the lord we have allowed people to do all kinds of things there are believers today who have all kinds of pornography on their phones their laptops they watch it and the moment the holy spirit wants to convict them they say i'll never feel guilty i'm the righteousness of god in christ jesus tomorrow they go back and do it again somebody goes come on now let's let I, you know you trust me i love you too much not to tell you the truth people sleep around and do all kinds of things and yes god is a forgiving god there is a difference between a challenge in your life and the spirit of rebellion at work in your life rebellion is a perpetual willful continual state of violating god's principles and the consequence is hellfire i don't care whether you're a pastor or whether you are whatever please take what i'm saying seriously hallelujah paul the one who brought what we know as the pauline epistles if his gospel was so pleasant i have a question why did they stone him 
have you ever wondered why did they stone him what did he say that got the people angry that they stoned him hallelujah why did they behead james it wasn't just because they were angry at them there was a content that we are missing today and that's the reason i'm telling you this is why many believers are not powerful anything comes and just throws us down because there is a content of the gospel that needs to be re-examined now don't carry your zeal and go and listen to every message a man of god is preaching and you get up and say i know better that's foolishness i hope you understand that god is granting us maturity but i am just telling you that as much as the grace message is good it only makes sense when it is incorporated as the whole truth there are many other components of the kingdom what's the formula for water the chemical formula for water is what h2o is that true just add one more um what now of oxygen it becomes h2o2 what is that are you seeing that same thing that can be water now for adding something wrong it can become poison at once and kill you everything in the kingdom must be taught within the dimensions that jesus kept them hallelujah i'm saying this because there are people who will be listening to these teachings all across and some of you god is going to trust you with ministries you will have your churches please don't be afraid of being criticized you must stand and teach the truth are you getting me i remember somebody who sent me a text one day and said please um i have a problem with you praying for people how do believers just manifest and you say you are casting out demons out of them is that really true and i, I just sent the person my text i said i love you we see from different perspectives in the kingdom and god will help us we operate from the perspectives that we see and that's all i said praise the lord ah, yeah, yeah. time is a revealer i hope you know that time time there are some things you should never talk about time just allow time to pass time that's why sometimes you say something and god keeps quiet Hmm. people just say you will never make it and God never responds and you are saying God, God has already spoken time is a language in this realm it can speak so loud brothers and sisters when we started this thing you are seeing I cannot tell you how many people criticize the things we are doing they say it won't last I, 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 I saw many zealous pastors those of you who were around those times you know that it was madness in this side of God's kingdom everybody was doing everything people carrying briefcases and ladies all around them i am this i am that people scrounging to go for radio programs and all of that and some of us look like fools but he has chosen the foolish things with everything with everything we will shout for your glory with everything with everything we will shout for your praise oh if i mislead you and i teach you error the god of heaven is going to judge me even if i don't love you i love my destiny are you getting what i'm saying the bible says ask for the ancient paths and walk in it i'll never forget one minister i've, I've shared with you the story that guy's ministry was grounded things were tight there were all kinds of demonic things but that guy would never accept that there was a demonic problem no no there's nothing wrong nothing was happening and one day he summoned courage to come for counseling 
and so as soon as he entered i saw a spirit enter with him and he just came just sat down and then he was telling me all kinds of things things are not exactly working this and that i said my brother i need to pray for you ah guy felt embarrassed his, his ego you know and you know we get deceived because you touch somebody and the person falls you just believe that it means god has finished working on you is that true And I was going to pray for the person. The last thing he could remember was that he got down on his knees. Right? Scattered the place, scattered the room. And I, I, I said, look at this is the same person who will argue and maybe insult me and write articles and write all kinds of things. This guy got up, went back to his ministry and boom! Goodness! How a man can sit down in ignorance for years. Whereas in two minutes of humility, your destiny can open up. How, how believers in the body have sat down in ignorance. Their salvation is closer to them that they can ever see. But it takes meekness to receive the word. You can be dying. There are families that can be dying in situations. Whereas the arm of the Lord is not short that it can save. What is keeping you from entering the next level of your life? Could it be that that brokenness there is nothing wrong to accept that oh this is what i used to believe but i've seen clearer now lord help your body in the name of jesus christ let's hurry up we're still talking about how to secure favor with god we have to rush Number two, you must have faith in God. You want to secure the favor of the save, the um, the favor of God in your life. Remember, we are talking about favor with God. You must have faith in God. It's very important. James five verse four tells us this is the victory that overcomes, and it says even our faith. You know what it means to have faith in God. I'm going to explain it to you. The first revelation of having faith in God is to trust Him. It's as simple as that. Trust Him. Don't complicate your faith experience. It means trust Him. Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. Verse 6 says, in all your ways, not some, in all your ways, recognize him, acknowledge him. And his reward for your acknowledging him is that he will make straight your path. And then verse 7 says, it's a warning. It says, be not wise in your own understanding. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Be not wise in your own understanding. That means you can feel you are wise in your own understanding. But he said, fear the Lord. And that fear of the Lord will make you turn away from evil. Hallelujah. Hebrews 11 verse 6 tells us that without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh unto God must believe that he is. In other words, that he exists. And then number two, that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. It takes faith hallelujah it takes faith in god it takes faith in god very important you must trust in the lord psalms 125 verse 1 he said they that trust in the lord shall be like mount zion that cannot be shaken hallelujah very important they that trust in the lord when you have faith in god it gives you stability through all of the boisterous winds that blow around our lives. Where are we? Okay, they that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which shall not be removed or shaken, but abides forever. Do you trust in the Lord? What is faith first and foremost? Let me tell you. Faith is never faith until it can be seen or heard. Let me shock you right now. Faith is never faith until it can be seen or heard faith comes from the greek word pistis hallelujah what that means is your faith 
is your persuasion or conviction plus the corresponding action you take based on that conviction are you getting my point now if you have not acted on faith it's called belief it's not called faith are you getting me belief is just your persuasion when you act based on that belief it becomes faith so the bible says have faith in god become persuaded so much in the character of god that you take steps based on that conviction so the equation of faith is revelation plus conviction or persuasion then plus corresponding action write it and never forget because faith comes when you hear the word of god so it starts with revelation then that revelation brings conviction or persuasion you are convinced about this reality you just heard about convinced enough to take steps then the bible calls that without the action component is called belief what many people are doing that they call faith is belief that means not acting on the word of god is the clearest proof that you don't trust god not acting on the word of god is the clearest proof biblically that you do not trust god so many people hear the word of god and we claim to be convinced let me tell you in this life the moment you are convinced about a thing action is almost automatic hallelujah a guy sees a lady and thinks he likes her and he keeps nursing that persuasion until it pushes him to say sister please after koinonia i'll be at this door will you mind passing there that's action three guys saw the lady and said wow nice lady i saw the way you know it's fine and she likes god praying it's nice when a fine lady is praying and that's all he stopped and they all moved but he was convinced and he said look i'm going to take a step further right and he meets the lady and then they get married what is that action whereas there is another brother who kept saying me even me god knows from the depths of my heart this is my wife and you watch somebody complete the equation and carry your wife i just spoke about marriage some of you have woken up now ah brothers you need this message before you carry any man's daughter to the altar that statement you make at the altar is so implicating it will take a long time for you to see the the significance of that vow don't let your type deceive you you are standing they are just talking will you do this everybody you are just telling everybody i'm getting married after the marriage the rubber will hit the road your eye will clear my friend jimmy says love is blind but marriage will open your eyes praise god so let's hurry up number three i'm going to shock you now you want to secure favor with god the third principle is the tithe t-i-t-h-e ah. how many of us have been taught in our churches and our different groups that tithe helps you to secure favor with god even those who have taught about tithe just preach about it because there are bills that need to be paid and they say you need to pay your tithe if you don't pay your tithe you don't pay your tithe and see whether god will bless you and you see the anger with which the man is preaching and god tells you please please pay this tithe. every church every ministry their prosperity is dependent on their own obedience to the principles of the kingdom my prosperity as a minister of the gospel is not dependent on koinonia people ah that would have been a terrible way to live i would have been frowning at you for every week what did you drop last week you know? there are many men of god who are burdens to their congregations because they do not realize that their prosperity is tied 
to their own personal obedience. Can I be sincere with you? Many men of God don't tithe. Hallelujah. Many men of God don't tithe. They teach tithing. Do you know how long it took me as a man of God to be consistent in tithing? I want to be sincere with you. You know I fear God and I honor God. When I saw how difficult it was to tithe with all the fear that I had for God, I said, man, that means many people, somebody is lying somewhere in this equation. It takes the giving grace to come upon your life. One, two, it takes you designing a system to make your tithing efficient. Are you getting my point? You don't tithe just, no, 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 no. The first thing I want you to understand about tithing is that tithing is not a debt you are paying. Many people come before God with tithe. Help me with one, one of these envelopes. And they, they bring the tithe. Thank you. Don't worry. They bring the tithe and they just stand frowning. Okay, God, please, so you will not harass me. Take. And once they pray, they say it's blessed. Where you just drop this in the offering basket. Your tithe secures favor with God. You want to be on God's side, brothers and sisters. Not being on God's side is disastrous. It's not just about finances. There is a spirit called the devourer. It is alive and active in the earth. Hallelujah. I must talk about this. Your tithe is not the payment of a debt. Because everything we owe belongs to God. Your tithe is an acknowledgement. It's a documentation of your gratitude. You're saying, Lord, in obedience to you and for your faithfulness, I bring 10%. Brothers and sisters, hear me. Let me kneel down. Look at me. I'm kneeling down. Snap me so that you see it on, on the... Don't, I'm dummy with your phone. I'm pleading with you in the name of the Lord God. If you love God, I beg you in the name of Jesus Christ. Be consistent in your time. See, I'm getting down on my knees and I'm begging you. Ah, you've been snapping, oh, Joe. <laughs> okay, let me just hands up so that you know that I'm kneeling down. Be faithful. Don't think tithing is a gimmick by a preacher. I can tell you this. Ask the financial department. By the grace of God as a ministry, we do not owe God one night. I don't care what collection is made for what. The tithe of God. Before anything happens. You really think we are running this ministry from. The, look you know what you are dropping in the offering basket. At least you don't know your neighbor's home. But you know your own. You can't run ministry with things people are throwing. No. There is a mystery of divine supply. Hallelujah praise the Lord. You must believe this. I was sharing some of the testimonies with Pastor Williams. Benefits of tithing. I remember one time we were just praying and, and trusting God. There were things here and there to, 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 to get and all of that. And We were just saying, oh Lord, we thank you because we are tithers, we are faithful. Till today, I was sharing with you, Pastor. Till today, we do not know the person. We just got an alert. 1.5 million by an unknown person we do not know into the ministry account whereas that's somebody's labor somebody who is collecting 50,000 how much is his salary that calculate it for more than one year for being faithful in time I think I was talking to the protocol department they went to purchase something in Abuja and then I was talking to them the mixer we just got a better mixer very good one and then I, I was talking to them I think it was someone on my birthday pastor someone just right yes and the person just said ah they just paid some money for their family that they were hoping you know 3.4 million naira and the person just said oh well thank God for all the words you are speaking the things you are teaching us and was just sending the tithe and all of that let me tell you when you see what we are doing because i know many of you sit and wonder how do these people really get money yes god is faithful but what is the one plus one of it let me tell you the one plus one of it is what i'm teaching you here the tithe 
if you are not a faithful tither, God is not authorized to bless you. Stop wasting your time in praying and fasting for wealth. If you are not a tither, I want you to know the devourer will stand and stare at your face. If you like, put a Bible on your head. Prayer is not the seed for financial breakthrough. Prayer is the seed for fellowship with the spirit and spiritual awakening and the presence of God and activating the anointing, not prosperity. Your tithe, your giving are the seeds for increase. Many people who want to be blessed will argue this thing. And you ask the person, how much do you have? How much has entered your hand that you are arguing? You are saying it's not correct. It's a terrible thing when you don't have results and you are still arguing. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. When you pay your tithe, you are securing favor with God. Please and please and please teach this to anyone you love and make up your mind from today. Your tithe is a tenth portion, one tenth of your income that secures open heavens, favor with God. Tithe because it guarantees God's continuous favor in your life. Oh, I don't want to be outside of the favor of God. It's dangerous. It's a risky position. It's like being face to face with a lion. Imagine how many devils of darkness will want on their own to destroy my life. I found a place of refuge. I found a way of walking under an open heavens. Do you know the wickedness? The arrows that fly by day. The noisome pestilence. Do you know how many people want to see your downfall? If there is no spiritual way of keeping yourself standing, you will fall like a leaf. Are you getting what I'm saying? How many people use all their monies for sickness? All their monies for no, no open heavens. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I make up my mind to be faithful in tithing say it again in the name of jesus see the truth is many of us are not consistent our titan life is up down up down that's why today it looks like some doors of favor open up and then tomorrow it's not god's fault jc penny many of you have heard about him jc penny one of the multi-billionaires who love god he was tithing and at a point something happened and he said he wanted to experiment with god he stopped tithing that was how his business just was died like that to a point that it was almost crashing and he said wow and he started tithing and that was how he, he got himself back you better believe what i'm telling you many of our parents do not tithe from their salaries they are collecting 150,000, yet they cannot afford 5,000. You ask them for 5,000, they will almost kill you because a devourer has eaten everything. In one day, two tires just patch and all the money has gone. Just when you are coming, something happens. Arrows that fly by day. And they now look and they say, sorry, you need, you need this and that. You will be spent and all the money goes. Then the moment the money goes, the person gets well by himself, the devourer. And you are praying and fasting and conducting night vigils and running around your parlor in the night rather than obedience that is better than sacrifice. Many of us can prefer to run marathon prayers from 11 to 6 to try to solve something that faithfulness in tithing. Many of our fathers have brought predicaments upon the family because they are not faithful in tithing. A solid building, a solid structure. Small rain just comes and washes everything just when they wanted to finish the zinger. Back to square one. There are even those that physical money disappears. Have you heard that story? Somebody keeps one million, he comes back and finds 780,000. 
someone came for counseling i've never had that thing the woman said rats eat her money no serious I'm, I'm not joking i'm not joking at all rats you come in the morning and you see pieces of what sort of devil tithing I think it was either Polenensho or, or, or Bishop David Oyeriko that shared something that some armed robbers came and they were going to, I think, um, destroy a woman or capture one family. And the woman shouted, she took her tight booklet, lifted it up and dropped it on the ground and said, God, watch the people match this booklet and come and touch me. At once, confusion came on the people. They were afraid and that was how they left. Brothers and sisters, what you do not believe will not work for you. Oh, I believe the word of God. I'm that minister of the gospel that believes every word of Jesus. Are you getting blessed? Leviticus 27 verse 30. Let's finish up on the issue of tithe very quickly. Leviticus 27 verse 30. Let me show you how the devil has been cheating many of us. Tithe heals you from greed. Everyone, let's read. One to read. Is the Lord's and it is holy unto God. So when I take my tithe, I say, Lord, I'm documenting my gratitude. I honor you. I thank you. How many of our parents receive some money? Maybe one money that is spending, it just comes in. Seven million. And they just calculate use calculator 700,000 me go and give that man of God I'm not stupid Abba 700,000 and you see the person arguing and within three weeks he has spent over one million naira on his health and brothers will come and put a gun and say we saw through the jazz that we used that there's seven million in this I say no it's only four no, now slap you say truly it's, it's seven where is it he said that's it here yeah. take it take it and preserve my life whereas the tithe of it have you seen how many of our family members put us in trouble i say this many of us keep wondering why is my father walking why is my mother walking the truth is that they are all walking they've never been driven from job but not even a house to build the mysteries of the kingdom there is no favor the heavens are closed so many believers operating under close heaven there are many ministries they are so tight no supplies they beg for everything squeeze people put people workers and all of that under every kind of pressure because the man of god is not tithing the people are not tithing the ministry is not tithing dr mike mudok was sharing and he said there was a time the finance of his ministry was going down it was going down so bad and he checked and then he called the finance department he said something is wrong we are not doing something right what is wrong hallelujah and the financial secretary said well sir um for about three months now we've not been paying tight because the bills are enormous and honestly if we are to pay tight you may we may shut you down from tv and all of that and my good doctor said because of that you stop paying the tithe that means we are going to crash to zero the day we stop paying tithe as a ministry i give you one to two months it will never happen that's why i have the confidence to say it maybe one day you come and you just see no fuel for generator or no chairs ah no as surely as the god of heaven lives we have created a system that does not depend on our personal emotions again is someone learning something is your heavens open pastor is your heaven open over your family there are many people who do not tithe they pay school fees 250 naira the, the child brilliant boy is coming back with one dull result zero 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 thirty nine forty one that's the average what is happening all kinds of witchcraft activities flying freely because the heavens are closed 
are you getting blessed with what I'm saying? You want to secure favor with God? You must be faithful. We've not talked about favor with men. No. And that's really where I want to dwell tonight. That's why I'm rushing. I'm not teaching on finances. So I'll stop here for you. We are going to pray. Just in one minute before we continue. Many of us need to repent. Because the financial stress in our family. Is not because of the job. It's not. It's not because they didn't promote your father. I'm telling you the truth. If we don't take responsibility, we will keep giving. It's easy to blame people for our financial predicament. Are you getting my point? It's so easy. If that they promoted me, I would have been collecting 200,000 now. Instead of 150, my life would have been better. So wrong. So wrong. You collect 1 million under a closed heaven. And you will see the way the devil will make a caricature of your life. Lift up your voice in one minute and say, Lord, I repent. Be sincere with yourself. Some of us need to pray on behalf of our families. Please be sincere. Lord, I've not been faithful. Tithe. I don't know what it is, oh God, but I find out that it's so hard. I've not had the revelation. I'm not yet convinced. I think it's a gimmick by a man of God or a ministry. I think it's just a gimmick. Koinonia is trying to squeeze out money from me. No. Go ahead and pray. Because there are many of us, no matter how many miracle services you come, I'm telling you, the heavens are closed. The heavens are closed. There is no favor with God. That's why the doors that were opened before, they are not even open again. Be sincere with yourself. There were strange manifestations of favor from God they are not even there again your shop that used to sell nothing is selling again because you think you don't touch for your business now the heavens are closed look at many of our parents you buy a new gadget you bring the machine everything breaks down this is the devourer brothers and sisters let's take responsibility tonight and say Lord we cry for help the finance of families are finished because of paying for drugs and sicknesses paying for damaged cars paying for all kinds of things pray and say lord i want your favor from tonight i repent i receive the giving grace to be a delight some tighter i realize that this is the key i don't care who you are I don't care what you read I don't care what your level of anointing is I don't care how hardened your heart is if you want to experience favor with God I'm telling you one of the keys is you must be a consistent tighter you must design a system around your life if there are needs in your life that's the more that's that's the more reason to tie don't say the needs are too much man of God is because you don't know I have so much needs I must do this and that touch your way out of that trouble touch your way out of that trouble eating your tight will only get you deeper I promise you you can apply every business principle you know fail to tight and watch the devourer scatter your life and your family but you be faithful towards tithing and watch God turn any situation around it doesn't take time commit God into your life anything God is involved in must succeed many of us God is not committed in the affairs of our lives I don't want to know what you are going through now tight your way out of it secure the favor of the almighty hallelujah praise the lord please let me challenge you create a system if you do internet banking you can have the account details of the ministry or whatever or if it is here you tight the, the the ministry's account details are available to if you do internet banking transfer it immediately otherwise buy envelopes 
buy envelopes i always have a stash of envelopes praise god the treasurer is here we created a system i don't even see the tight as it is counted we take it and 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 sow it to the appropriate ministry brothers and sisters please listen to me are you not tired of what you have seen your loved ones go through didn't they go to school didn't they get all the degrees look at everything see how helpless people are because they know not neither will they understand and the bible says they grow up in darkness and the earth is out of course let's finish the last part how do you activate and secure favor with men i must talk about this spoke about three things right now to secure favor with god that number one you must have the fear of god the fear of the lord number two you must have faith in god you must trust him number three you must be a consistent titan but when it comes to finding favor with men the rule is different if you have been sleeping this is the time to wake up i believe with all my heart that your destiny depends on this revelation i'm sharing tonight daniel chapter one open our eyes oh god daniel chapter one help us grant us grace someone is walking in undeniable realms of favor after today in the name of jesus christ i want to share with you something very powerful how do you secure favor with men in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. Verse 2. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hands with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar, to the house of his God. And he brought the vessels into the treasure of his God. Verse 3. And the king, listen now, spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of the eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel. So the king is inviting some people to stand before the king. Hallelujah. And the kings, and of the king's seed, and of the princes. Verse 4. Everyone read. One, two, read. Children in whom was no blemish but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding science and such as had ability take note in them to stand in the king's palace it takes an ability are you seeing that he said those who have what ability to stand in the king's palace and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. Let's stop there. Look up. There is a mystery to securing favor with men. And I want you to get this very straight. There were many people who were captured. But notice what Nebuchadnezzar said. He said there are a kind of people I want. The king that we captured now. I want all the people that walked in his palace because they have been trained according to the life of royalty. Bring them. I want certain choice guys that came from Israel. There were certain things that the eunuchs were looking at. Brothers and sisters, there is a price to secure favor with men. Can I tell you something? Favor is the currency to get money. Think about what I said very carefully favor is the currency to get money write this down please the ultimate key to entering the realm of favor with men never forget this for as long as you live 
if you pay attention to this we will celebrate together as the great ones in the future but you neglect this you will be part of those quarreling those who will be the great ones listen the ultimate key to entering the realm of favor with men is to possess the ability to provide solutions and solve their problems write it down the ultimate key i'll say it again to entering the realm of favor with men is to possess the ability to solve their problems and provide solutions oh shiba write this down solve problems then write three ellipses provide solutions let's discuss this briefly when i solve this we'll tie it up by showing you how god announces men in the kingdom the ultimate key brothers and sisters hear me every man in scripture who became great became great because he was favored he found favor with men and every man who found favor with men had something to exchange for that favor is someone getting what i'm saying joseph would have died in the prison if he never had the ability to interpret dreams daniel would never rise to reign in a strange land through the dispensation of three kings if he had no ability to solve problems i say this all the time and some of us neglect it write that word down ability ability this is your key to finding favor with men and entering the realm of greatness gender notwithstanding background notwithstanding age notwithstanding nationality notwithstanding hallelujah until you solve a problem you remain insignificant and unnoticed if you are not providing solution brothers and sisters nobody needs you the world is so desperate for solutions they will only run towards the direction of those who are solving problems the greater problems you solve the greater you become magnetic please understand this if you think you will people will invite you into their presence just because they like you or because you are a christian you are dreaming wake up hello <laughs> you know many of us have this funny understanding that because i'm serving god one day great men will call me ah, yeah, 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 yeah. start reading your bible very carefully and you will find out that no great man appeared before the king just like that there was an ability that qualified him to stand before the king i have a question what will qualify you to stand before men who can honor you and bring you into greatness are you getting my point the reason why you may be insignificant as you think is because your ability has not brought you to a position of notoriety please hear, me, hear what i'm saying all men are equal but their graces and abilities separate them and make certain things possible for others your ability that anointing that skill that grace that gift is what you will use to access favor with men there are people today by the grace of god who have come to see me and i know that if not for the grace of god there is nothing i will have in exchange for the level of the honor of those people not at this level of my life are you getting what i'm saying 
there are offices and places that i access today and bump into those people and i know the level of great men in themselves who cannot access those offices the gift of a man can make room for him and bring him before great men your gift can add to your age your gift can qualify you where you do not qualify and the king sent for joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon we must understand this then i will show you how god lifts people in the kingdom say in the name of jesus i have an ability that will bring me before great men say one more time in the name of jesus i have an anointing i have grace i have an ability that will bring me before great men i have entered places today that my father may never enter perhaps i have entered places today that with all humility my contemporaries maybe may never enter their lifetime because of the gift of god look when you possess this ability they told jesus they said all men seek for thee all men they will pay you for it they will pay you in millions and think it's a privilege that they are honoring you and you will be surprised you're wondering my goodness but there is an ability and because they need it they will look for you there are seven billion people in the earth but more than 90 percent of those people are looking for solutions that's big business brother if you can become a solution provider you become magnetic see the darkness in nigeria look let me tell you if you have a ministry that spits saliva on people's face and they get healed spit it on 20 people and let them get healed and you will see the level of intelligent people who come and stand for days waiting to be healed many of us do not know the level of darkness that is upon the earth please listen the spirit of god is moving in this place right now because i, I want to share something very powerful there is an anointing you have that can bail you forever there is an anointing the ability that makes you to stand before kings you will not be the one looking for them the gentiles will come not to you to your light that's what they want not you if you think people come because they like you there are many people who come for koinonia not because they like me oh you will be amazed to see how many people came to jesus king of the jews you are this and that when it looked like jesus ministry was nose diving they say i beg crucify him let his blood even be upon our head please listen let me just advise you if you think you have a crowd or people love you because of you there are very few people in your lifetime who will love you because of your personality many people will love you because of what you carry are you getting my point see baba Lama. there is this treasure in earthen vessels so that you will end some things in your life i will never be a failure in this life forever i know it i know it rich men have problems that i can solve ah yes yes great men have problems that i can solve i cannot solve every problem but brothers and sisters there are problems i can solve now watch this let me explain to you the equation what i call the equation of greatness you will be so blessed just give me a few minutes and we'll pray now ecclesiastes 9 verse 1 media project it i love the lord when i did this study my heart dropped i said oh god i'm sorry for all the times 
that I kept blaming you for so many things. Ecclesiastes 9. Eleven, verse eleven. Did I say one? Eleven, please. Verse eleven. Everybody, please read. I returned and saw under the that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding nor yet favor to men of skill this is the mystery we're about to discuss now everybody read it but time and chance i want to show you the mystery of greatness listen repeat this last clause again one to go time one more time but time and chance happens to who how many everybody now replace the word chance where are we now Okay, but time and chance. Replace the word chance with opportunity. Are you ready now? One to read. I want you to replace the word time with the word seasons. Are you ready now? One to read. But seasons and opportunities happen to them all. But seasons. Like the hand of a clock. It has been designed by the sovereign act of God that for every man upon the surface of the earth there is the turning of the hand of the clock and that one day time and opportunity will always happen to them. Ah. Holy Spirit. Time and chance did the bible say it happens to some happens to everybody that means there is a guarantee please listen somebody's deliverance is coming there is a guarantee based on the word of god that a day must come if god is god where time and chance you know how they do cooperative society five of us bring twenty twenty thousand it's now your own turn it's now your own turn and i start smiling although it's not my turn because i know that my turn is coming for sure and the bible says time and chance so in the equation of greatness we are bringing the constant factors and then we work on the variables we are doing a little mathematics here are you getting my point it says time and chance this one no devil can stop it no harbor is from your village you don't need to pray about it he said time if you are under the sun time and chance happeneth to them ah i show you a mystery ah so time that means a time will come in my life whether i'm prepared or not whether I pray for it or not, whether I fast for it or not, a time will come where the hand of God will navigate opportunities. Whether I see it or not is irrelevant. God's justice must be done. Therefore, the Bible for once us is a redeeming the time. Now that you know that a day will come, this is where a lot of people miss it we keep focusing on looking at the day the bible says it will come remove that in the equation of your preparation for greatness and begin to focus on taking advantage of that day it will come the equation of greatness let's look at um okay greatness therefore in the kingdom comes by number one god Imagine seasons and opportunities together and then number two you finding favor by securing that opportunity i'm going to explain myself let me have somebody please okay Aaron, come 
hallelujah watch this let's assume this is spiritual timing and according to god's justice system okay stand here aaron please, that this time is going to keep moving are you seeing it now and that a day will come it may take a long time but that a day is going to come when it will come to aaron and if aaron misses on that opportunity it will keep moving again are you getting what i'm saying that's why if god wants to help you in life he restores yes not what you lost yes he tries to bring back the time so that the mistake you made you can remedy it he never said i will restore the goods because they are not necessary once there is time and those seasons is somebody understanding what i'm saying now the problem with the body of christ is that we all sit down being distracted at looking at the clock and waiting for the day it gets to our turn rather than getting busy to sharpen that ability so that the day the time comes you will enter the presence of greatness once and never come out again forever every man in the scripture that became great waited for that kairos moment joseph was in the prison but he knew there is an ability to interpret dreams it's only a matter of time the brother sold him he said no problem pharaoh's wife lied that he wanted to rape her no problem they threw him in the prison but when the season comes that part of the equation is god that starts moving that's favor with god are you seeing that now god made it in such a way that the wine presser had to do something wrong to go to the prison so while he was in the prison the divine transaction started happening and the wine presser came out although the one presser forgot about him but a day came let me tell you it does not take two days for you to enter greatness read the bible it always happened in one day there is always a day called one day he said john remain in the wilderness until his season of appearing there is, john was sharpening himself in the wilderness when the season came he came out and he completed his assignment one time jesus for 30 years was preparing for a season of three years 30 years read all the books knew all the law did everything and there was flawless victory within three and a half years so there are many of us sitting down looking at people's cars and say man i like this jeep goodness ah bmw this and that ford explorer 2014 limited edition look at that foolishness we are there claiming i claim it time and chance your turn is soon coming create an urgency sharpen the knife sharpen the anointing sharpen the healing anointing one day see let me tell you you may say there are many people the bible says in israel there were many widows but to none was the prophet sent god will send people specifically to you ah, and when you take advantage of that season that is it you are open to a dimension of grace i have studied almost every great ministry i admire and i found out that in the history of that ministry something always happened something happened at the kairos season and the men plunged into it with revelation and boom never to return again are you are you getting what i'm sharing with you ah i feel the anointing of the spirit if you sit down and you are wondering kai this house one day we are coming when will this come no 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 you never see me bother you insult yourself when you do that many young people here our dream is car right car let me buy car and you are trying to save how much can you save for the car you want i'm teaching you a higher law get out of all those 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 ways of frustration and misery 
that's why many people cannot give God glory they suffer for everything in their life come and adopt the kingdom's way there is a higher dimension there is a higher way believe me look let me tell you I'm a businessman I've read many business books so don't you think I'm just talking nonsense I know what I'm saying hallelujah when that kairos moment comes in your life when it comes in your ministry some people are snoring through the night the time will pass they wake up and an opportunity that took 10 years has just passed before it will come back again the first son is graduating from the university he has not learned his lesson after 25 years it comes again prophecy comes in the name of jesus let restoration happen and by the mercy of god the time is reversed it comes again the same lack of preparation keeps bringing people down are you seeing why it takes more than receive it to walk in this realm you would thank me in the future for what i'm teaching you i'm teaching you the way to a superior life so that you stop blaming your parents and say if my father only accepted this job stupid man would have been out of this thing uh -uh, leave your father alone god is bringing you to a point i don't care what degree you graduated with i don't care there is a problem listen if you solve a millionaire's problem you have access to his millions it's as simple as that I'll never be a failure in this life never so every time I spend in prayer I'm sharpening my giftings for that day a day will come when that season comes God will send a great man who can sow a seed of 100 million naira to koinonia the person will be dying of tuberculosis or something it's like that that's how it works there is always something you can exchange for and god will make it in such a way that on the day he's coming somebody will be bringing koinonia messages that one is god's part of the equation while that is happening i'm praying in the secret place Shekata ba -ba -ba -ba. Rakata ba -da. greater wisdom oh god you can sleep in the night and not know that that is the last time you will sleep in that realm Hi. if joseph knew if joseph knew all the people in the prison would have cleaned his shoe and said oh god it is within your bail me imagine the guy that bought joseph when he was shaving joseph little did he know he would have earned himself a position forever imagine those who were with the pre in the prison with obas and john the night he will come out if they had known that he would just come out never to return they would have said augusta let's pray father bless this man so that at least he will remember them beware of people that you keep mocking and say you are not this you can't speak english very well you can't do this and that and that beware let me tell you you know why because if you are not if you don't take time please look at me let's just focus god is just doing this thing if if you are if you don't pay attention can i tell you the truth a day will come you will find out that the same person you saw today you looked at her said mary what is there you will open an office that you feel from for two weeks there are people today who are angry with me they are angry with me because there were times when we could access one another and at those times they could say a lot of things call me when they wanted but i was doing something they were not doing we were all laughing and joking and today because of the difficulty in reaching me they pick offense it's not my fault i refuse to remain at that level i intend to grow be nice to people today let me tell you brothers and sisters for those of you who look at people in koinonia and when we say greet one another you just turn you don't know who you are turning time and chance he may come from a poor family he may have one ton sanders but let me tell you time the word you are hearing is sharpening you for that time a day will come there is something god has put in you this is the justice of god this is why every man can be great time and chance happens to them all the day it happened to our parents they were not prepared they were there talking about others criticizing others and the clock passed 
and it went to one drunkard who just got born again and saw the time took advantage of it and they said ah, is this not the boy on campus that was drinking he was drinking but he did something with his opportunity now he's a billionaire he's a pastor he's advancing the kingdom let me tell you something that happened in 2008 i believe i was in accra for a retreat and something happened hallelujah no i think 2007 or so i was in accra for a retreat praying and seeking the face of god for the things that he was going to do and while i was praying my money had finished i had nothing not even to eat not even to pay for the hotel where i was having the retreat for that night i finished praying i was reading a book within the gates it's a divine revelation book when i read it, the spirit of god just told me stroll around and i came out i started strolling i was walking like a fool time and chance i want to share with you testimonies now the holy ghost just said just keep walking i was walking like a fool i didn't know where i was going up to 25 minutes i was just walking the next thing i saw a signboard welcome to accra city campus and the holy ghost said enter immediately i entered the first person i'll meet is the src president and the guy listen the guy looked at me and the moment he looked at me he said how are you sir when he shook me he just took his hand he said jesus he said can you come to my office miracle number one listen listen true story i want to tell you i know what i'm saying i'm not just making noise when this guy brought me to the office we didn't speak more than five minutes he started shaking time and chance and they ordered a meal i first ate the meal and then we attended their fellowship i sat down quietly after they attended their just like the campus has friday fellowship when they finished i went to his office watch this the moment i started talking i started talking at about two four we rounded up that meeting past nine when we started talking the university esco started coming to the office one by one they would come this one would fall under the anointing and remain there it was in that place i inaugurated the prayer group that prayed for the campus in accra in that accra city campus on that day i'm still in touch with that gentleman again his life changed there was they have their prophets like their maybe what you would call an fcs president yes after the, the the president would finish he invited me again to accra and i went to minister in a program and it was a powerful and explosive program i was even on radio the radio and they did an interview i think that was when we traveled with bala alex and a team of other people listen that's not the whole story when i finished that night the people came together past night they raised an offering of maybe equivalent in naira now of maybe thirty thousand and they gave me i didn't even know how to find my way back they directed me i found my way paid for that night and i ate a very good meal i said it works i remember in the room i was screaming i said come on not it has equal value in any land you don't need to know nobody all this godfather nonsense let me tell you get out of it right now if god is on your side there is nothing nothing you cannot get listen the night i was supposed to leave those guys started crying because they would come and visit me in my hotel it was within three or four days their lives changed they said what sort of person i taught them on the kingdom it was an unusual open heavens so the last day they invited me again i prayed with them strengthened all the people you know bless them they had impartations and all of that and they raised me money again an equivalent of maybe say fifty thousand, and then i returned back who would have helped me i don't have any uncle but the gift of a man the time and chance is god's own equation leave it for him god is speaking to someone tonight you have been crying and say lord when will it come god said forget about the issue of when are you prepared are you seeing that god delaying seasons is an act of his love that thing you have been calling delay you are not prepared if it had come before this message you would have blown it only for it to come back 10 years 
you open a shop nobody's coming god is saying uh -uh, i don't want you to miss be careful what you call delay some things may be the hand of god your job you didn't get the job god said i i don't want you to struggle there is something you can know you go for a job in four months you have become one of the executives it does not take time if you can solve the problem you will rise to the top all the days of my appointed time i will wait but while i wait i will sharpen the knife i will pray in tongues while i wait i will keep studying the word i know i'm going to stand before kings i must have contents to give them i will talk like i'm talking before weak men i will stand before presidents a day will come it will be a privilege to air koinonia a day will come we will not just have one or two tv stations there will be many one billionaire can sponsor it for years but while that time comes we will pray we will fast we will travel let them call you a fool because there's no car what is car see a man came to mike modok because of something that he did he was begging mike modok to buy a car for him mike modok said i don't need it he said i i entered a covenant with god that every year till you die i'll be buying you the latest benz car one day i was passing around abuja and i saw all the mighty houses they were building around my tama and the holy ghost told me do you know how many of your houses are here no i'm serious god told me he said you will only build in life just for the formality the gift of a man the owner of that building will need me one day darkness is a mystery that announces light the world will be too dark one day they will need the anointing they will need it i'm telling you many of you have not been respecting what you carry i know what i carry i know what i carry it's an anointing of the spirit the nations can never 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 they can never deny the effect they may not like me but there is an anointing for i reckon that the sufferings of this present time i'm fasting i may be lean I may so carry but there is an anointing my father could not enter but there is an anointing there is wisdom there is the gift of God and I will increase your greatness and comfort you on every side there is a price to pay I don't blame anybody left now is to sharpen my ability higher I may not speak the kind of English you want but when I say it an anointing will leave you can deny my English but you cannot deny the anointing there is something see this is what I'm training you to become there is a sharpening you may not see it now the world will need you you will collect a salary of maybe hundred thousand but your boss will sow a seed of five million to get out of trouble your ability listen we are soon going to pray your ability to maximize the moment opens you up to untold realms of greatness look at me Aaron is here let me share with you his testimony permit me Aaron a bit for years many of you know how skilled Aaron is for years the kind of job he was trusting god for would not come i know times when things will get a bit painful for him and we kept encouraging he will be listening to the word of god but time and chance a season just came brothers and sisters supernaturally he got a job too he got connected with the deputy governor of Kaduna State within how many months Aaron that they, within two months they moved him to go and head a unit in Joss now he heads a unit in Joss and we are only counting see I think there's one of our ladies here two of our ladies that I know the moment they graduated they've not even served they just called them to get jobs you may not value what you are receiving don't let anybody fool you 
and make you think you are wasting your time a day will come the price you are paying now is what your colleagues will be paying in the future you are already paying it now you may look like a fool some of you as you are going back home now they will insult you and say we are not seeing the fruit it does not yet appear but time and chance will reveal that i'm not praying in tongues for nothing hallelujah this year let me give you the last story and then we'll pray this year i was in ibadan we were, we all went to ibadan and when we went they lodged us in one of the best hotels there and it was Yerima, victor and um, sam they sent me a text in the afternoon they said we are swimming and we're enjoying and then i looked through my window they were playing table tennis they were swimming you know they were enjoying themselves all snapping and enjoying and i looked and then i remembered a story that same hotel listen in 2007 i went to that same hotel for something but i could not pay for any room because it was very expensive listen to me i still had the anointing but time and season had not come i went there i still saw the arrangement i sat down there there's the reception there brothers and sisters i was looking for a place around that vicinity where they were doing night vigil it was a friday night so i will attend the night vigil because i had no money if i touch anything i will not have my transport back are you hearing what i'm saying that same hotel somebody would have looked at me and said oh what failure Hiya. mistake big mistake you don't need to respond to those who think you are failures because you went to the board and you saw five carryovers and the devil says see tell him no you see just keep watching time 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 yes you may have an extra year write it and move and thank god because in that extra year you are still moving ahead see if a plane is moving forward even if you go back to the restroom you are still moving forward because the plane carrying you is moving forward i stayed that night till morning no bathing no nothing and a few years later there is a protocol of people together with the wife of the police commissioner of the state we came and we sat with this woman we are still going back i think some sometime towards the year we are still going back to our place again this woman was astonished the things that god did in in Ibadan was amazing the woman followed us to our hotel room and we kept talking till almost i think to 12 or past 12 and she brought she said she must show her husband her husband is one of the top police people praise god and she they recorded everything me prophesying and praying for her and she said she must meet her husband and she just brought out a check i think a check of thirty thousand or something she said sorry you man of god this is small but can you take this i said oh lord time and chance it's not like i prayed more i just kept doing what i was doing it when when your season comes the same thing you did that did not produce result will now produce amazing results there are miracles that happen in koinonia here that if we were on air people will already start traveling but time and chance don't worry a day will come stop trying to announce yourself there are many people on air getting millions of naira they don't have up to half of sam's anointing continue what you are doing time and chance a day will come god will arrange your destiny helpers in front then they will give you 10 minutes to lead prayers that's the day god will announce you in 10 minutes what the spirit of god will do you will have more than 20 invitations come for our conference come for this you are reading business books you are preparing yourself it looks like you're a fool there's nothing working no office only knowledge people even call you big head don't worry a day will come unto none of the widows was was um was elijah how did he put it now was the prophet sent except that widow of Zarephath. but the question god is asking you tonight before we pray when the season comes 
when the season comes are you sharpened enough to make that your last season in that realm will you make the words of your critics become a self-fulfilling prophecy or will you contend they may be seeing the brother and sister praying and they say hey, you could know what you are doing don't worry you don't need to answer anybody just keep praying seasons a day came we we're doing this same thing but it was at the back of chapel no facebook to capture the picture and show the world that there is the hand of god upon these people but a day will come so i stopped focusing about cars nonsense house no leave all those things from today i'm teaching you when you sit with friends and they say oh boy when now when will our level change just know that they are wasting your time time and chance it never announces to you that the day is coming you will just sleep in the prison one night and by the second night you are in a palace you cannot account for what brought me here oh i believe it for somebody i believe it for somebody let me bring a word for somebody you may be going through certain things you are killing the lion in the secret nobody knows you are killing the bear nobody knows a day will come god will put you in front of goliath and it will be in the presence of all israel on that day saul will know that there is a david some of you have anointings today that it is to be revealed the world will run away don't look for premature manifestation let me tell you service is the best way to train yourself and sharpen yourself you see all these things people say i won't play keyboard till they pay me you are being foolish you can serve now and they give you prayers and you make blunders at least the mistake was made in jerusalem before you now get to judea and samaria and make blunders there make the mistake here sing and go off key here we will laugh at you alone and we'll tap your back there are mistakes that great men don't make in the open no make it here make it here sharpen that knife who is god speaking to tonight because i sense in my spirit that we are at the edge i cannot tell you trust me i'm not speaking nonsense i know it in my spirit i've been telling you this for days i have been fasting and preparing for these seasons i have i have picked the signal that believers in this side of god's kingdom there is a dimension of there is a shofar that will blow in this season and let me tell you warriors will arise this i call it the zaria experience we will reproduce this thing in this country many people do not know what god is doing in this side of the kingdom you just finish your school wear your convocation gown or sit back a day will come god will say your season in zaria is over it's time to move like arrows like arrows in a man's quiver he will send you you will wreak havoc across the seven mountains that day will come pay the price now forget the name you don't need to be called an apostle or pastor or prophet is irrelevant settle down hallelujah that's why see listen let me tell you one secret about my life i shared it with the school of ministry students you never see me in broad daylight just roaming around foolishly no if you see me around there was something to do you never that you are walking on the street you just see me jumping around and say hey, corn or maze which one is hot no i'm preparing for such an extraordinary life i want my life to match the visions that i've seen in the spirit call me apostle thank god for the healings i won't be deceived i want to carry the word of the lord with such a razor sharp accuracy so i will stay in the presence i will fast i will pray let me be lean today no problem it doesn't kill it doesn't kill prayer doesn't kill don't be a fool 
the suffering of the future is what kills the price today doesn't kill there's no job instead of praying and lamenting be preparing and say i know a job will come the day they do that interview they won't just give me job they will promote me at once because they will say where have you been rise up on your feet my spirit is fired up please jump up on your feet i like you to begin to blast in tongues instrumentalists come up everybody come on from the depth of your spirit do it for your future time and chance happens to you a day will come your season of appearing your season of appearing don't be tired don't be tired man of god don't be tired woman of god don't be tired prophet of god don't be tired apostle of god don't be tired keep pressing sharpen the anointing sharpen the skill sharpen the gift hallelujah 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 the next prayer point i'd like you to pray and say lord i receive the capacity to build listen if you can't just pair yourselves into two find a brother or sister that is ready to pray and say lord in the name of jesus I receive grace to build to sharpen that ability as I wait for that day. Come on, pray, Koinonia. The day will come. The day will come.
and thou will increase my grace and comfort me on every side listen, listen. the third prayer point you are going to attack every spirit listen of premature manifestation and distraction many of us want to be known it's not fair i'm anointed give me prayers to pray i'm anointed put me on the stage nonsense Stephen remained here serving tables but the anointing was too much for tables you are going to pray listen there are many of us you cannot delay gratification you want to buy the shoe now you want to buy everything now you see people standing and you say i must buy this kind of shoe i must buy this kind of watch oh glory the word is working you better keep quiet and pray prepare for the season read the books read books on fatherhood read books on leadership read books on ministry sharpen yourself when you are tired and it's 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock time to pray when you are tired remember your destiny drag yourself up I'm tired it's true that I'm tired for the sake of my Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Anytime you see a nice jeep, go and get a book and read. That's how to that's how to claim it. After you speak and say in the name of Jesus, but prepare, knowing that there is something you can have that will bring it to you. A day will come when God permits us and we start translating koinonia messages to books. I tell you some of them will be bestsellers. But until that time comes, let's keep preaching the cutting S messages. Hallelujah. Two more prayer points and we're done. Listen. Immediately we play these two prayer points. There are people here who need to surrender totally to Jesus. The moment we pray those two prayer points, as we round up the last one, I just want you to come out here quickly because this is serious business. I don't need to cajole you. You need to surrender your heart. That you want to say, Lord, truly everything. So make sure when that time comes, we're going to pray. We're going to pray this prayer point. Hallelujah. And you're going to say, Lord, all the resources all the materials all the components i need to expose myself to in preparation for that season bring them to me in the name of jesus lift your voice and pray all the trainings all the books all the papers all the catering schools, all the fashion schools, all the business schools, all the business schools, all the ministry training, all the degrees you need to pass. All the qualifications, all the leadership traits that you need for this season, 
So sister, shut up and pray and say, there's no husband. Why don't you sharpen yourself? And say the man that talks to me will know he spoke to a treasure. When you are going around doing all kinds of nonsense, there's no man coming. This coin on your brother said they are not seeing. Why don't you sharpen yourself? Brothers, rather than sitting now, all these ladies don't like me. Are you serious? What are you doing for your future? Show me the investments you are making to be an extraordinary man. Last prayer point. Lord Jesus, hold my hands in this destiny and take me until I become great. Lift your voice and pray. Hold my hands. Hold my hands. Through the rain. Through the storm. Lord, yes, I want to give up. When the voice of death is too much, let me hear the voice of the Spirit. Hold my hand. The hand of the that began this walk. That same hand. That same hand. Hold my hands. Hold my hands. When I'm almost giving up, hold my hands. When I'm almost falling, hold my hands. When it looks like the wait is too long, hold my hands. When I'm about to give up on destiny, hold my hands. When the husband is not coming, hold my hands. When the job is not coming, hold my hands. When the miracle seems to be delayed, hold my hands. Hallelujah. You can choose to remain at the level you are forever by giving excuses or you can take the hand of God and say, Lord, I'm on your side. I don't care what men say. Let them criticize me. I'll still be moving. I don't care where well. they may misunderstand me. Why are you always praying in tongues like a fool? No problem. Is it only books you will keep reading? Don't you visit friends? No problem. When the season of appearing comes, the brothers of Joseph that looked down on him, they were the ones who now came. Joseph said, I saw the sun. I saw the moon. I saw 11 stars bowing to me. Those who criticize you, they will bow. It's only a matter of time. Hallelujah. I bring a word of hope to somebody. The issue in your life right now does not come to kill you. It is the making of great men. There is no money in your pocket. Some of you have been preached to think that it's because you don't have faith. It's because you have faith. Every time you pray for the throne, a Goliath comes. When you see a Goliath, don't cry, start smiling. That's a sign that a new season is before you. The presence of an enemy always ends your current season and opens up a new season for you. If there are no enemies in your life, I'm afraid of you. May your life not be so ordinary that your enemies ignore you. You will remember this day. 
a day will come when you look at these pictures today tears will roll from your eyes because you will see that in a short time God has glorified himself in your life and you will be wondering was it this easy and I was almost missing it the songwriter says I was right at the edge of the breakthrough can I tell you something I sense in my spirit that the clock is getting close to someone's life I, I mean it from the depths of my heart as a house I know that we're about entering a season I've been announcing this for months God will not do anything in this house and not reveal it to me I'm like a pregnant woman that's why I stay in the secret like the wise men looking at the stars trying to understand what are you saying because a season will be better and we will only see and wonder and say Lord was it this fast hallelujah we'll take one more prayer point but let's allow those who are saying Lord I'm not going to lie to myself tonight I need you in my life please I want you to rush out here quickly do it from the depths of your heart whether you are outside or inside please welcome you are welcome this is for the sake of your destiny mean it from the depths of your heart enough is enough run to Jesus there's nothing to be ashamed of nobody is closing his eyes you don't close your eyes when they are giving you a gift there are still people outside Jesus is talking to you and saying this is why I brought you for this meeting you wanted to come but the devil kept stopping you but tonight is your night you can go back nobody will talk to you but you are the one who knows that your destiny needs to change don't let the proclamations of your enemies be a self-fulfilling prophecy run to Jesus young and old those of us standing stretch your hands towards them and begin to pray those in front talk to the Lord talk to the Lord some of you are crying don't be ashamed of your tears say Lord I mean business with you I'm not being emotional because of a message I have seen that my destiny is in my hands I make up my mind I congratulate those of you in front no man condemns you condemnation does not come from God he convicts you like he has done I don't care what you have done I don't care where you are Jesus is about to give you a new beginning we believe in you and we believe in your destiny every one of us had to make this decision there's nothing to be ashamed of make it a genuine decision now lift your right hand and say after me from the depth of your heart say after me Lord Jesus I believe in you I confess that you are my Savior and you are my Lord today I receive eternal life into my spirit I declare that I'm a child of God Satan stay out of my life Jesus I acknowledge you as the Lord of my life let the peace of God flood into my heart right now I denounce sin I denounce Satan from today my life begins to move upward only in the name of Jesus Christ now let me pray for you Jesus these ones have come because they love you we salute their courage and as a family of faith we receive them with gladness and Lord I know that among these ones there are apostles and prophets and businessmen and leaders and world changers Lord I pray that in this season you begin to lead them through dealings begin to bring them to the knowledge of the principles of the kingdom Holy Spirit you are our master mentor we commend these ones to your life let them experience it truly the Zoe life that God life in the name of Jesus Christ 
we bless you with the blessings of heaven everything that you came here with that is not of God drops here tonight and never returns with you in the name of Jesus you will be transformed and changed for real and you will never I break associations that are ungodly that keep you in sin and iniquity I pray in the name of Jesus that your change and transformation will be genuine in the name of the Lord Jesus Koinonia celebrate them we love you we love you we love you we love you hallelujah now listen just do something for me very quickly I'd like you to follow the gentleman waving his hands we'll have your details we'll be praying for you and then we'll have a word with you God bless you celebrate them Koinonia hallelujah please keep standing just give me a few minutes and then we'll release the blessings on you hallelujah please use this week hallelujah Jordan's bookstore is there I want you to settle down on books and materials this week hallelujah this week from now till next week Friday don't be distracted I know that many of us are free some of us who are working when you come back from your office just quietly settle down please get materials some of us is is gluttony that will kill away our destiny you just eat and sleep and snore around the bible says a little sleep a little slumber a little folding of the eyes and poverty will come upon you like an arm bandit go and get books get tapes media is here immediately after koinonia you can meet them get as many koinonia messages we have preached messages across different areas is it marriage is it ministry get this koinonia teaching settle down close yourself even if it's for two hours hallelujah try to sleep well in the night once it's 12 or 1 o'clock find a place don't disturb people please don't disturb your neighbors because you are getting spiritual. Find a place and pray. Even if it's for 30 minutes. Don't say you must pray for 5 hours. Pray in tongues. Write your persuasions. Those of you who have access to internet, go on YouTube. Download or listen to quality messages. Minimize watching movies. The television is good. But it can be a disadvantage sometimes. That's why those who watch it too much never appear there. Hallelujah. There are those who make news. There are those who watch the news. Hallelujah. Make up your mind. Use this week. Flog it out with destiny. Some of you need to break ungodly associations. You love God, but you have too many friends. And many of them are not godly. When, when you want to bless God, some ladies will just come. Right, sister? And suggest all kinds of nonsense. Association is not compulsory. Are you getting my point? If there are friends that are leading you, they bring all kinds of poisonous movies. They come with wrong communication evil communication mention all kinds of words that should not be heard among believers you don't need to criticize them but I tell you friends that will not take you far Abraham took Lot with him it was because of Lot he almost missed out you need to create a protocol around your life don't let anybody hop in and out of your life anyhow because you are going somewhere they may not understand it now stop running to uncles and aunties being a nuisance to people's houses please give me money you now lie to this person my school fees is thirty thousand. Oh, or uncle give me the job auntie give me this no settle down with the world and they are the ones who will be celebrating you tomorrow hallelujah very quickly before we leave if tonight is your first time worshiping with us here in koinonia while i take the announcements please listen to the announcements they are very important i'd like you to find your way to the front if this is your first time please don't sit back we have a prayer a blessing and a prophecy summon the courage to come out we love you we love you thank you mommy thank you sir thank you sir 
thank you please don't sit back i know there are a number of people outside if you came with anybody and is sitting back tell him come come and receive the blessing come and receive a prophetic word The Lord bless you and the Lord increase you. In Jesus' name I pray.